Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Hogwarts. Voldemort, don't stop me from studying. Chapter 41. Bade likes the Weasley twins very much. They are the kind of people who will try to bring joy to others even in the most desperate situation. He originally just wanted to stop them from continuing to commit suicide, but looking at their bright expressions, he couldn't help but think. Why should I hide the truth for Voldemort? Voldemort tried every means to hide his true identity because he was afraid of Dumbledore, what good would it be for Vader to help him hide it? On the contrary, if Vader is the only one who knows a secret, then once the other party finds out, his situation will be very dangerous. But if the secret is spread, it will be Voldemort who will be in trouble. Thinking of this, the entangled mood of hiding the secret suddenly became clear. But Vader didn't want to really spread the news completely, leaving Voldemort with no way out. After all, Dumbledore couldn't kill him completely now. Voldemort only hid his identity in school to seize the Philosopher's Stone. What if he found that he had no hope of seizing it, and he went on a killing spree in anger? The students in the school were no match for him at all. I don't know how many people would die before Dumbledore arrived. He said carefully. Actually. The Weasley twins' eyes lit up. Let's find a quiet place to talk. For Wade, the safest place besides his dormitory is the Umbrella House. He remembered that there was a hidden room of requirement in this school, but when Wade watched the movie, he only paid attention to the plot and special effects and didn't pay attention to the specific location of the room of requirement. So now he has been looking for it for three months, but he still hasn't found it. In order to avoid the same situation as the movie plot when the protagonist is talking about a crucial secret, there is a pair of eavesdropping ears behind him, which leaks the secret to the villain, causing a series of tragedies they came to the Umbrella House. The holiday is about to start, and everyone's enthusiasm for learning has also decreased. At this time, there are only two people in the Umbrella House Hermione is almost blocked by the high pile of books, and she looks exhausted from reading, and Ryan brought a pile of wood and is making a new target. Wow, is this your secret base? Fred was the first to stick his head in and look around. Soon, a red-haired head came in beside him, took a look and greeted him, saying, Hello, Miss Know-It-All. Oh, I'm not good. Hermione said depressedly, does anyone know who Nick Flamel is? He is not in, the great wizards of the 20th century, or, the directory of contemporary famous magicians. His name cannot be found in, major discoveries in modern magic, and, research on the development of modern witchcraft. I have almost flipped through a hundred books. Is he not written into the book at all? Several people inside and outside the room were stunned at the same time, and then said in unison, what are you talking about, Hermione? That's Nick Flamel, of course he is in the book. Hermione slowly raised her head and blinked, with a rare look of distressing confusion on her face. You all, know Nick Flamel. Of course. Ryan lifted up a target and said, he celebrated his 665th birthday last year, and it was published in the Daily Prophet. My father said he might be the oldest person in the world. 665 years old. Hermione repeated in disbelief. Fred said, Nick Flamel is the greatest alchemist, and the only philosopher's stone in the world was made by him. Philosopher's stone. Hermione thought she must have seen this term in that book. George said, the philosopher's stone can turn any metal into pure gold, and it can also make the elixir of life. My biggest dream when I was a child was to own a philosopher's stone. Turning stone into gold. Immortality. Hermione repeated. Wade who turned around and closed the door, couldn't help but complain, Hermione, have you become a repeater? Although Fred and others didn't know about repeaters, the meaning was simple and easy to understand, and they all laughed out loud. Hermione looked at Wade eagerly. So Wade, you don't know Nick Flamel, do you? Wade explained simply, I've been learning alchemy recently, and the first thing I read was his work. Alchemy. Ryan was surprised. That's a sixth grade course. Yes, but I can start to lay the foundation from now on. Wade asked, isn't Theo with you today? He went to help Professor Sprout clean up the greenhouse. I remembered that the target that was broken last time could not be repaired, so I just made a few new ones. Ryan explained, patted his clothes, put down his sleeves and walked over, picked up the water cup and drank water. Wade gave him a clean up to get rid of the tiny wood chips. Fred sat astride the chair and poked Hermione. Hello. Are you okay? 
Are you still alive? Do you know what day it is? Hermione, who was lying on the table, stretched out her hand and slapped Fred's hand that was waving in front of her eyes. She sat up and said angrily, If I had known, I would have asked directly, I have been looking for more than a month. Wade flipped through the books on her table, all of which were about modern and contemporary magic history. Of course, Nicholas Flamel could not be found in this way, he was born in France in the 14th century and was written in an earlier book. Hermione, why do you want to check Nicholas Flamel? Ryan asked with concern. When Wade was not around, Hermione always generously answered everyone's questions, and everyone had long regarded her as a true friend. I, I just. Hermione originally wanted to say it was nothing, because explaining the reason revealed that they violated the rules and broke into the restricted area in the middle of the night, but when she raised her head, she saw that everyone around her was looking at her with concern. She has magnanimous eyes and a sincere expression. This made her feel extremely ashamed for her concealment. It's like this, Hermione hesitated, and finally told them about their adventure, and how she, Harry and Ron went to visit the gamekeeper Hagrid after the Quidditch match. Zhang let them know that the thing guarded by the three-headed dog was related to Dumbledore and Nick Flamel. It seems that the big dog must be guarding Flamel's Philosopher's Stone. Hermione finally concluded. I dare say Flamel asked Dumbledore to keep it for him. He knew that someone was paying attention to the Philosopher's Stone, and he was friends with Dumbledore, so the Sorcerer's Stone was placed in Hogwarts. Hermione glanced at Vader and did not say what Vader had guessed last time although she now felt more and more that Vader was right. The whole thing might have been a test given by Dumbledore to Harry, but let other people know that Vader was right. Students knew that the headmaster was giving special treatment to a particular student, which was not a good thing for Harry. What it means to be in the limelight, just look at how Harry, who had just entered school, was chased and intercepted by his classmates. Hermione knew that her friend had been deeply troubled by this. Then who's thinking about the Philosopher's Stone? Ryan asked. Hermione said. Harry and Ron both thought it was Snape because his leg seemed to have been bitten by a three-headed dog. But I think. Before she finished speaking, George suddenly said, Ki Luo. Hermione was stuck for two seconds before saying, What does it have to do with Professor Corell? Although I don't think he is very qualified. The Weasleys looked at Vader. Wade thought for a while, and did not mention what he knew about the plot. He just repeated what he heard that day word for word. He has a good memory in this life, and even though more than a month has passed, there is almost no deviation in the retelling of the conversation. Invisibly, there seemed to be a chill rising from the soles of my feet. There was a long silence in the umbrella house, and no one spoke for a long time. Finally, Fred broke the silence. I gotta say, this joke isn't funny at all. Did you get it, George? George nodded silently, his face unusually pale. So, Ryan struggled to understand and frowned. Professor Corell is not Professor Corell. No, should I say, a dark wizard has possessed him. He wants to kill Harry Potter. We the defense against the dark arts professor is a death eater. He looked around at everyone, as if expecting someone to suddenly shout, Did it scare you? Ha ha ha. But no one spoke. Ryan sat down holding the table, and after a while he said with hope, should we, should we go find Professor Dumbledore? All Death Eaters are afraid of him. As long as Professor Dumbledore takes action, we will definitely be able to. Hermione shook her head slightly and said softly, No, you don't understand, Ryan, he stepped on my corpse and became a big star. Think about this, Ryan, who else would say that? Wool and cloth. The blood disappeared from the boy's face bit by bit. Ryan clenched his fists and his body trembled slightly. But, it's impossible, that person is dead, isn't it, everyone knows that he is dead, by Harry Potter. He seemed to have bitten his tongue suddenly, and his voice stopped abruptly. Hermione looked at him pityingly. She could tell that the boy actually believed it, but he just didn't dare to admit it. It seems that if you don't admit it, that person will not be resurrected. This was nothing to laugh at, for she too felt a shiver. Hermione, who was born in the Muggle world, should have had no interest in Voldemort, but she had read a lot of books before entering the wizarding world, so she understood better than most students born in wizarding families, that, whose name must not be mentioned, man, has caused many shocking tragedies. 
Before that man disappeared, his power had reached its peak, and a terrifying shadow shrouded the entire British Isles. Even Dumbledore. The world said that the man was most afraid of Dumbledore, because the war never stopped. Burning to Hogwarts, but not even Dumbledore could stop the series of deaths. This made Hermione subconsciously have a deep fear of that person, but when she wanted to say his name, she opened her mouth, but couldn't say it directly. It seems like it will awaken some terrible monster. Float. I mean, the mysterious man, Hermione looked at everyone and said, if the mysterious man is really possessed by Professor Quirrell, I think we should tell Dumbledore. Vader, why did you do that at that time? Didn't you find Professor Dumbledore immediately? Vader thought for a while. Maybe it's because. I find it hard to believe that Dumbledore knows nothing about this. Fred nodded. Dumbledore must have discovered Quirrell's abnormality, but for some reason, he has not dealt with it. George said seriously, he knows everything. But what if? Hermione asked back, what if Dumbledore is just suspicious but still looking for evidence? He may think that Professor Quirrell just surrendered to the darkness and doesn't know that the mysterious man is in him. We should find Dumbledore, tell the truth, and let him decide what to do. Of course, Hermione, you are right. Ryan said, of course it should be done. Then why don't we act now? Fred stood up resolutely. I saw Dumbledore in the auditorium during dinner. He must be at school now. But Hermione didn't expect him to be so decisive. She asked hesitantly, should we call Harry? I mean, the person the mysterious man wants to kill is him. Harry should know where the danger will come from. Vader thought for a moment. Like you said, Hermione, let Dumbledore decide. Hermione thought about the, test, he said and nodded silently, her eyes full of worry, as if she was worried that Harry would be killed by Voldemort on their way to find Dumbledore. Standing in the corridor, Wade took out a bright silver whistle and blew it. A loud whistle penetrated the air sharply and urgently, and after a while, an owl spread its wings and flew over from the west tower, passed through the window, and landed accurately on Wade's outstretched arm. Cool. Fred whistled. The owl Ava tilted her head and glanced at him, then called, cuckoo, twice. Vader rolled up the written note and let Ava hold it in her mouth. He warned, give it to Professor Dumbledore, and then bring me his reply. Ava nodded, spread her wings and flew away. Everyone watched as it circled in the sky, then spotted the window on a small spire and flew in. Hermione bit her finger and said worriedly, Professor Dumbledore will not take our letter seriously, right? Maybe I should write a more detailed letter in the letter to let him know that we are not messing around. Fortunately, Dumbledore didn't keep them waiting for too long, maybe only a minute or two, before Ava flew out of the window again. The owl handed the reply to Wade. On the parchment, it was written in a long, thin, circle with circle font. Welcome to my office. The password is Cascading Sunday. Cascading Sunday. George muttered, I don't think I've seen this dessert in the auditorium. Fred said, there was one at the end of term dinner last semester. What were you doing then? By the way, you secretly stuffed a bottle of cockroaches into Mr. Monta's body. Let him think he bought a pile of cockroaches. George remembered the prank at the time and laughed. He never ate cockroaches again after that. Wait you took the opportunity to steal my Sunday. How can you say it's stealing? Fred argued, I took it openly, but you didn't see it. The two of them were playing and joking, and they came to the entrance of the principal's office together. On the way, they happened to meet Michael who was coming back from the Quidditch field. He greeted him and naturally integrated into the team. No one thought there was anything wrong. There was an extremely ugly stone gargoyle crouching at the entrance of the principal's office. Fred avoided George's attack, jumped to the front and said, Colorful Sunday. The stone beast jumped to the side, and the wall behind it split in two. Behind it was a slowly rising spiral staircase. Several people walked in one after another, and there was a bang behind them, and the wall closed again. The stairs took everyone higher and higher, and Wade was secretly amazed in his heart in the muggle world. Escalators are of course very common, but this is the first time he has seen such a thing in the wizarding world. So why should we be the same as muggles in this regard? The elevator is always installed where the principal needs it. When everyone was a little dizzy because of the stairs, they finally saw a shining oak door with a brass door knocker in the shape of a griffin. This is Dumbledore's office. 
Fred strode forward, knocked on the knocker, and the oak door opened silently. Dumbledore's office is very strange. The walls are covered with portraits of old headmasters. Some are sleeping, some are looking at them with interest, and some have only an empty frame. The long-legged table, covered with curious silverware, whirled and puffed out small puffs of smoke. The sorting hat was placed on a board and seemed to be asleep, making a slight snoring sound. Behind the door, on a tall gilded perch, stood an extremely beautiful bird. Its feathers are golden and red, and although they are a little sparse, they are still dazzlingly beautiful, and its eyes look down at everyone with very smart eyes. Oh my god, Hermione whispered, it's actually a phoenix. I read in a book that Professor Dumbledore has a real phoenix. Albus Dumbledore sat behind the table, wearing a pair of half-moon glasses on his aquiline nose and wearing a dark purple robe printed with fleur-de-lis. He sat on a high-backed chair and looked at everyone gently with light blue eyes. Welcome, kids. I hope you're not bored in my office. How so? This place is so interesting, Professor. Fred said boldly and lively. Dumbledore chuckled softly and said, You said in your letter that you have something very important to tell me. You can tell me now. Everyone looked at each other and urged with their eyes. Hermione also chickened out at this point, as she too had been forced to violate the ban and was reluctant to surrender. In the end, Wade had no choice but to stand up and repeat the conversation he had heard before. Others added to their guesses. Michael's face gradually turned pale. He didn't expect that they were going to the principal's office to talk about such a serious matter. He looked from this to that, feeling as if he was the only shocked person at the scene. Dumbledore didn't show any surprise after listening patiently. His eyes that seemed to be able to see through people's hearts turned to Wade and asked, When you heard this conversation, are you sure he didn't notice it? I had used the fire spell before that. I don't know if he noticed any traces of the spell. But as soon as Professor Corell entered the door, I hid. I couldn't be seen from the angle of the window. Wade said carefully, before he left, I made sure that I made no noise, did not use magic, and had no obvious smell on my body. I waited outside the window until early morning before going back, and on the way out I met Griffith's portrait. And Professor Murray. In the subsequent defense against the dark arts class, Professor Corell did not pay special attention to me, and his attitude did not change significantly. Quote. Dumbledore nodded slightly and added, for the time being, it seems that he has not noticed it. But I want you to remember one thing, from today on, try not to think about this matter, and don't look at Professor Corell. Do you understand? Wade nodded silently. Professor. Ryan couldn't help but ask, why don't you catch him? Before he knows he has been exposed. It's not yet time, Mr. Caro. Dumbledore said patiently, actually, at the beginning of this semester, I found that some heartbreaking changes seemed to have happened in our Professor Corell. The information I brought also confirmed my worst suspicions, but it's not time to expose him yet. But don't worry, I asked a very reliable person to monitor him and ensure the safety of the students. So Professor, is he really? George asked softly. I think so. Dumbledore confirmed their guess. Voldemort has returned to this school again, in a state that no one can imagine. But he probably didn't expect that his wonderful disguise would be used by a few of you. A child discovered that, he always has a habit of looking down on those who are not as powerful as himself. Oh, in fact, your performance is very good. But, didn't everyone say that Voldemort was killed by Harry Potter when he was still a baby? Fred asked. He was indeed severely wounded and disappeared from sight on the night he tried to kill Harry. But he was not really dead, I have always been sure of that. Dumbledore said, Voldemort is now in a state of in a rare state, even the death curse cannot easily kill him. Fred looked confused, but Dumbledore had no intention of explaining in detail. Professor, can I tell Harry this? Hermione asked carefully. I don't think so, Miss Granger, Dumbledore said politely and unquestioningly. But, since Voldemort killed Harry's parents, I don't think it's a good idea to let him know that his enemy is right in front of him. Dumbledore said, I'm afraid Harry won't be able to deal with it calmly and rationally like you. This will give him it's a huge risk, so I need you to keep it secret, especially to Harry, can you do that? Everyone nodded together. Fred muttered, but the mysterious man wants to kill him. In order to ensure safety, do we have to let Harry leave the team? 
Wood will cry. George forced a smile. He said that Harry was the best seeker he had ever seen. He pinned all his hopes of winning the championship on Harry. Oh, about that. Dumbledore crossed his arms and smiled and said, I don't think you should give up the joy of Quidditch just for the eyes of the dark. So, yes, Harry does not have to leave the team, I will ensure his safety. After getting his assurance, the Gryffindors were relieved immediately, in the hearts of the little lions, who could be more reliable than Dumbledore. Several people happily prepared to say goodbye, and when they were about to leave, Ryan hesitated and stopped. Professor Dumbledore. What? One more thing, Ryan hesitated and hesitated. Just say it, Mr. Caro. Professor Quirrell, Ryan mustered up his courage and looked up and asked, after you drive away the mysterious man, what will happen to Professor Quirrell? Will he be okay? Ryan asked. Faced with this question, Dumbledore, who had always been calm, finally changed his expression. He looked deeply into Ryan's eyes, and his eyes were slightly moist. I'm afraid not, child. Ryan opened his eyes wide. In order to be able to attach to him, Voldemort did terrible things to him. Very terrible, they formed an evil symbiotic relationship. When Voldemort leaves, Corell will inevitably die. Everyone fell silent. For these 11-year-old children, watching someone around them irreversibly heading towards death, even if he is a bad guy, they began to feel sad in their hearts. Children, you sympathize with him and even want to save him. This is a very noble character. Dumbledore lowered his eyes and said kindly but coldly. But when Quirrell sold his soul to Voldemort because of greed and ambition, this was already a doomed result. Leaving the principal's office, several people had mixed feelings. Dumbledore really knows everything. Fred said, did you see? He is not surprised at all. It's hard to imagine. Ryan said, we are only in the first grade, and we have to experience this kind of thing. War, mysterious people, death, I thought these things should be far away from us. And Professor Quirrell, well, I heard that he used to be very good. They stood at the corridor, outside was covered with snow, and some little wizards were shouting and playing snowball fights in the yard, including Harry Potter and Ron Weasley. Dumbledore is right, Hermione said suddenly. Wade was puzzled. Huh. Harry shouldn't be told the truth. Hermione looked at Harry with a pitying, motherly look, otherwise, the heavy reality and hatred will overwhelm him. Don't talk about this. Wade reminded. Remember what Dumbledore said, we should try not to think about it, and don't look at that person. It's better to stay away from him. Hermione nodded silently. Michael looked at Wade, hesitant to speak. Wade asked him with his eyes, but he shook his head and said nothing. After returning to the lounge in the evening, Michael avoided everyone and whispered, I thought you would resent Dumbledore he knew everything, but let the students face danger you almost died, Wade. Wade suddenly turned to look at Michael. Michael looked at him strangely. Have you never thought of questioning him about this? Vader. Indeed not. The plot he knew clouded his thinking to some extent. Vader knew from the beginning that Voldemort was behind Quirrell's head, and he also knew that no one had died this year. He had a sense of superiority as a traveler, and a prophet, in his heart, and even had a game-like mentality. When he suddenly discovered Voldemort's secret, he just pretended that he was not careful and did not blame anyone else. At this time, under Michael's gaze, he carefully sorted out the whole thing from scratch, including his own thoughts and Dumbledore's possible considerations, as well as the final ending of these people in the plot. He found that he still wouldn't question or resent Dumbledore. Why? Michael asked puzzledly, he is the principal, he should protect our safety. Then what can I gain by questioning him? Wade asked seriously. Watch Dumbledore repent. Or let him apologize to me. What's the use? Resenting Dumbledore for this will keep us away from each other in the future is it dangerous? Michael was speechless. There's no point dwelling on what has happened, Michael. Vader finally said, yelling at the only person who can protect us, questioning him, and contradicting him or even more stupid, only by being favored can we be confident. We don't if you are favored, you should not indulge in venting your emotions. Michael was silent for a long time and asked softly, don't you feel aggrieved? No. Vader said, if I learned anything from this incident, it's that. First, don't place all your hopes on others. Second, those who have power can do whatever they want. Third, when you can't beat others, you have to endure it. 
That's the way the world is, it's always been that way. Bader spoke sensibly to Michael, but in reality, he was not completely unaffected. Several nights, when he woke up in the middle of the night, a green light representing death seemed to flash in his dreams, and sometimes there was the hideous and cruel voice of a noseless bald monster. In the second half of the night, Wade looked at the stars on the ceiling. He couldn't fall asleep for a long time, so he simply got up and read a book. He began to spend more time studying in alchemy. In the last week before Christmas, Vader finally completed his first alchemical work. On the pale yellow parchment, golden rays of light formed a very complex and regular geometric figure. The inner and outer circles slowly rotated at different speeds, and the ancient magic texts alternately flashed with golden light. Vader could clearly see the path of magic flowing through it, the way the spell worked. He could even vaguely feel where things needed to be adjusted and where materials needed to be replaced. After a while, he felt his eyes were astringent, so he closed them and rested for a while. When I looked again, there was just an ordinary piece of parchment in front of me. After completing his first alchemy work independently, Vader's eyes changed again, and new functions appeared. After being able to see other people's real names and how to cast spells, Vader discovered that he could also see the magic drawings, magic flow patterns, spells used, and engraved magic texts in alchemical items. But you need to concentrate and be very focused to, see. As soon as your attention is slightly distracted, that special vision will disappear. That's a good thing, but Vader really wishes his golden finger could give him an instruction manual. At first, he thought that he would be suitable to be an Auror in the future, nothing about Polyjuice Potion or human body transformation could be hidden from his eyes. Later, he felt that he was probably suitable to be a teacher. Each student received one-on-one -on -one targeted tutoring, and the excellence rate was not 100%, but at least 90%. Now Vader felt that he was probably a born alchemist. But if he had never been exposed to alchemy in his life, wouldn't he never be able to discover that his eyes could see more magical things? During tutoring on Thursday, he handed over his repeatedly adjusted work to Professor Murray. Oh, let me see, a piece of parchment. Professor Murray put on his glasses and stopped Wade's intention to introduce it. He first slowly touched the seemingly ordinary parchment with his long and thin fingers. Hmm. Ordinary parchment, with a little mercury, stonefish oil and mountain sage added, it's not a special material. Professor Murray muttered the incantation in a low voice, shaking his fingers slightly, checking the magic circuit on it. Transformation spell, association spell, elimination spell, and concealment spell, very clever, very clever idea. He looked at Vader with surprise and sparkling eyes and said, I guess you still have the same parchment in your hand, right? Yes, Professor. Wade laughed, took out a self-bound notebook from his bag, and said, actually, I still have a pile of them. Professor Murray smiled. He sat down and thought carefully for a while before writing a sentence on the paper in his hand. Extraordinary wisdom is mankind's greatest wealth. The strong and powerful fonts appeared on the two parchments at the same time, and the content and position were exactly the same. That's true. Professor Murray checked again. The structure of the magic circuit is very stable. Even I can't change it. There is almost no restriction by distance, and information can be transmitted in an instant. He stood up as he spoke, and walked back and forth in the room several times, muttering something that no one could hear clearly, and his eyebrows seemed to be flying. After a while, Professor Murray turned around, strode to Wade, stretched out his hand to hold his shoulder, and said excitedly, Child. Do you know? You will change the world. This is a great invention that can change the world. Merlin. It is more meaningful than all my inventions so far. It's hard to believe that you are only 11 years old. This is a piece of parchment, but it is more than just a piece of parchment. It will change the way all wizards communicate. Why didn't anyone think of it in the past? It is so simple, and so great. Looking at Professor Murray's shining eyes and somewhat crazy attitude, Wade's heart began to beat violently. He resisted not to retreat, his fingers curled slightly, and he almost couldn't help but reach for the wand. In an instant, countless precedents flashed through his mind such as Song Juwen who killed people for poems, and Newton who suppressed and persecuted other scholars. Wade's heart instantly became alert, as if he had returned to that day, he heard Voldemort's voice through a wall. 
Dumbledore's calm, light blue eyes seemed to be staring at him. Wade secretly pinched a button-sized beam, this was a safety insurance he prepared for himself. He tried to remain humble and calm, and said with a smile, it's not my invention, I just borrowed the precedent of Muggle Network communication. Without the professor's careful guidance, I would not have been able to make it successfully. Vader certainly knew the importance of, phone. But he thought that when the Muggle world already had mobile phones and the internet, there was nothing to make a fuss about when an instant communication device appeared in the wizarding world. Moreover, wizards already have a double-sided mirror that can be used as a, video call, tool. The advantage of parchment is that it is cheaper, and the spells are simple and easy to understand. It can be said that the prerequisites for its creation have been created by wizards hundreds of years ago. It has been in place for many years, but I don't know why, no one seems to be thinking in this direction. Wade kept a smile on his face, hoping that Professor Murray could understand what he meant, you can discuss the research results if you want, and share the glory with everyone. Don't fall out on impulse, let alone take action. Otherwise, he would have no choice but to fight back. Vader didn't really believe that Hogwarts with Dumbledore was absolutely safe, and it wasn't difficult to use forgetfulness and the imperious curse. But Professor Murray didn't seem to understand. He retorted without thinking, why doesn't it count? The American continent existed thousands of years ago, but Columbus who discovered it is also called a hero. Dumbledore discovered the dragon the twelve uses of blood, haven't people studied dragon blood before? Of course not. There is no shame in standing on the shoulders of giants, the important thing is that you are the first to invent it. Write two letters. Vader's racing heart slowed down. He suddenly realized that Professor Murray had no intention of occupying his alchemy results at all. He was simply happy for Vader. It's just that Professor Murray's expression was too extrovert and his eyes were too excited, which made Wade feel threatened. He slowly adjusted his breathing and heartbeat, realizing that there was something wrong with his current mentality. Because of Quirrell and Dumbledore, he now has extremely low trust in the school's professors, and subconsciously speculates on them with the greatest malice. But in fact, Professor Flitwick was gentle and enthusiastic, and Professor Murray had been helping and guiding him since they met. He really shouldn't have doubts like this. Professor Murray had no idea what was going on in Vader's mind. He wrote a few lines and suddenly asked, By the way, Vader, what is the name of this work of yours? It should have a name, right? Wade said as calmly as possible, Yes, I call it, Book of Friends. He wrote, Book of Friends, on the paper, but felt that it was missing a bit of charm, so he wrote, Book of Friends, in Chinese characters. What is this? Professor Murray curiously poked at the three words that were as elegant as paintings. The Chinese characters for the Book of Friends. Wade explained and read it again in Chinese. Professor Murray imitated it awkwardly, thought about it for a moment, and smiled, not bad. This can become your unique trademark. He buried his head and continued to write. Bede, have you applied to stay in school during the holidays? No. Wade sat next to him, my parents have been looking forward to my coming home. On the third day after Christmas, I will hold a small party at home. You must remember to set aside time on that day. Professor Murray said, I can introduce to you some, um, to you very helpful friend. Of course, my pleasure, Professor. Because of the guilt in his heart, Wade is now particularly easy to talk to. Also, your, book of friends is kept secret for now. Don't make it public. Professor Murray blinked and said with a smile, I will give you a surprise during the holidays. The remaining doubts still lingered in his heart. Wade subconsciously became vigilant and said hesitantly, Ah. Uh, actually, I originally planned to give it to my friends as a Christmas gift, if the response is good, just sell it on a small scale among classmates to make some pocket money. Oh. Vader, Vader. Professor Murray raised his eyes and looked at him, as if looking at a young child, and smiled softly, my child, you are still young, so you don't understand. There are two kinds of alchemists in the world, one people who have learned a little alchemy and work in the Ministry of Magic or various companies are called alchemists, but they are actually just the labor force of capital, the other kind of alchemist is me. He tapped his finger on his chest, then pointed at Vader. And you. Vader opened his eyes slightly. Surprised. Do you think this statement is too early for you? 
Professor Murray asked as if he could read minds. Vader nodded. I thought, it was just a simple little thing. I have just started in alchemy. Professor Murray smiled and shook his head. The person who invented the quill must have thought it was just a simple little thing, but we have been using it for more than a thousand years. He wrote the letter, stamped it with his own seal, and let the owl send it away. Finally, he told Wade, small gifts between friends don't matter, but forget it about selling them yourself, your time should be spent on a more useful place than to be a hawker or craftsman. In the evening, Wade finished making all the friends' books that he planned to send out during the holidays and returned to his lounge. He lay exhausted on his bed, thinking about all the people he'd met here. Quirrell and Voldemort wandering around the castle. Dumbledore, who coldly puts the lives of all teachers and students on the chessboard, is also the guardian of this school. Don't you feel wronged? Michael asked him. Ryan said, I thought these things were far away from us. Fred said, Dumbledore really knows everything. Hermione said, Dumbledore is right, the heavy reality and hatred will suffocate him. And Harry Potter, the boy who survived. Bed covered his eyes with his hands and looked like he was asleep. A soft, pop, suddenly sounded in the room, as if a bubble burst. Bed immediately opened his eyes and turned his head to see the house elf Zoe standing in the middle of the dormitory. You are here, Zoe. Bed smiled. Thank you for agreeing to my request before. Zoe whispered. Bed Gray needs help. Zoe is of course willing to help him. But Zoe has not received the signal, so I came to see him. Because I was not in danger today, Professor Murray is better than I thought. Bed took out a green, bean, from his pocket and showed it to Zoe. This is the communicator between them, and Zoe also has one in her hand. After completing the Book of Friends, Wade also made this small magic bean, using the association spell and the transformation spell. As long as he squeezed it hard, the bean in Zoe's hand would heat up. Ever since the, chance encounter, with Quirrell, Wade has been thinking about how to ensure his survival. Dumbledore has his own plan, and the professors of the school will not ignore Dumbledore's orders to be his bodyguard. The only ones who can be used and are willing to help him unconditionally are the house elves of the school. Fortunately, he has a good relationship with the house elves in charge of the Ravenclaw Tower. This strange creature can apparate in any corner of Hogwarts, and its magic is even stronger than some adult wizards. Although they cannot disobey the professors of the school, helping a student escape from danger does not violate their duties. So Wade made an agreement with Zoe as long as the magic bean in his hand heats up, Zoe will come to him immediately and take him to a safe place quickly. Before meeting Professor Murray today, Wade brought the magic bean. He prepared for the worst, but luckily it didn't come to fruition. The house elf looked at him with a childlike clear eye. Is Bid Gray sad? Uh, Bid was stunned, sighed, and turned the magic bean in his hand and said, It's not sad, right? I just suddenly found that my thoughts were a little too dark. He swallowed the word and said, Should it be called paranoia? I used very bad thoughts to speculate about a professor who was full of kindness to me. Bed Gray is not wrong. Zoe suddenly said loudly. Zoe. Professor Murray is a good man, but Weed Gray is right to be vigilant. Zoe nodded vigorously. Zoe knows a defense against the dark arts professor who tried to have a bad relationship with a third-year girl and was sent to Azkaban. Zoe also knows a defense against the dark arts professor who used dark magic on students and was also sent to Azkaban. There is also a defense against the dark arts professor who took advantage of the student's trust to invite him to a party, and then contacted dark wizards to kidnap students and extort ransom. Weed laughed. He is also in Azkaban. Zoe shook her head. The wrong spell made his wand explode and he died. It's all defense against the dark arts professor. This position is really weird. Weed complained. The defense against the dark arts professors change very quickly, and there are many bad people. Quirrell is also bad. Weed Gray must always be vigilant. Zoe said seriously. Weed sighed. I will. When he woke up in the morning, Weed waved his wand and looked at the time. Golden words appeared. 7 a.m. Today is Friday, they don't have classes in the morning, and most students don't get up early. When Wade walked through the common room, there were only two fifth-year students sitting in front of the fireplace reading books. Poor senior high school students. Wade felt sympathetic. 
he used his wand to conjure a ball of blue flame and put it in a bottle. With this, he wouldn't be too cold even when he went outdoors. Tomorrow Wade would take the train to leave school. He decided to go to the library after breakfast and borrow as many books as possible so that he wouldn't waste time when he went home. After spending a morning in the library, when he returned to the hall, Wade found that Professor McGonagall and Professor Flitwick were there, busy arranging Christmas decorations, and immediately stepped forward to help. Ah, Wade, thank you. Professor Flitwick said happily, we're going to hang all those ribbons on the wall. Several people worked with wands, hanging bright ribbons on the wall, twelve towering Christmas trees on both sides, hundreds of candles lined up, coiled around the Christmas tree under the command of Professor Flitwick, and burned quietly. The tip of his wand also sprayed golden bubbles, hanging on the branches. Professor McGonagall gently tapped the ice crystals hanging from the branches with her wand, turning some of them into shiny little animals or small bells. The students in the hall were amazed by the effortless transfiguration. More students came to help, and they gave full play to their creativity. Some turned into golden stars, some turned into deer with their heads held high, and some made several sleighs run over the hall, showing an excellent level of magic, which made the two professors add a lot of points to the college. Of course, there were also failures in transformation. A Slytherin boy originally just wanted to make a few candles, but he didn't expect the spell to go wrong. The tip of the wand suddenly exploded, and his whole face turned black, causing others to laugh. Soon, the hall was completely renewed. Michael, who came downstairs to eat, said tangledly, You know, Wade, I miss my family very much. But. He fiddled with the branches with his fingers, and the ice hamster hanging on it immediately squeaked. Christmas at Hogwarts seems to be very interesting. He looked like he wanted to stay. Wade, Michael, you are all here. West, the sixth grade male class leader, strode over and took out two pieces of paper and handed them to them. Come, sign this. Michael took it. Notice prohibiting the use of magic during holidays. Why should I sign this? I am a wizard. Yes, underage wizards. West nodded perfunctorily and urged. Hurry up. I still have to find Anthony and the others. Wade looked down at the notice. According to the law on reasonable restraint of underage wizards, underage wizards need to pay attention to the following prohibitions during the holidays. First, wizards under the age of 17 are minors and are prohibited from using magic outside of school. Second, minor wizards should consciously abide by and uphold the International Confederation of Wizards Statute of Secrecy. Minor wizards need to know that any magical activities that may attract the attention of non-magical members, muggles, are serious violations of the law. Third, knowingly using magic in front of muggles is a crime and will be warned by the Ministry of Magic. In serious cases, they will be expelled, close black lens bracket. There are seven or eight prohibitions behind, but they all say one thing, no magic is allowed, and no information about the magic world is allowed to be disclosed to muggles. Wade has seen in books about the history of magic that muggles have been hunting wizards on a large scale since the 15th century. Although wizards are often more powerful individually, their social structure is completely decentralized. Wizards need to rely on the muggle world for food, clothing, housing and transportation except for travel, which often exposes their identities. For more than 200 years, many wizards were persecuted to death by muggles. In particular, because wizard children cannot control magic, they easily attract attention and are arrested, imprisoned or even burned to death. In order to protect the wizard community, the Statute of Secrecy was established in 1692 and has continued to this day. It is still strictly observed and is the iron law of the wizarding world. Of course, wizard books only record the persecution of wizards by muggles, but do not record the reasons for the sudden deterioration of the relationship between the two sides, nor do they record the counterattack and revenge of wizards against muggles. Now, I don't know whether it is to ease the hatred between muggles and wizards and avoid intensifying the conflict. Their textbook, History of Magic, is vague about this period of history, and the focus is on the deeds of the weird Wendelin a very strange and powerful witch who enjoys the feeling of being tied to a stake and burned, and deliberately changes into different appearances to let people catch her 47 times. History of Magic, uses this special example to prove that the practice of burning witches is completely nonsense. 
but in fact, many witches were really tied to stakes and burned to death. Of course, there are actually more ordinary women who were mistakenly burned as witches, or rather, the vast majority of them. Wade looked at the notice, a complex magic circuit appeared on the seemingly ordinary parchment. Under West's urging, he did not have much time to study it, so he could only pick up a pen and sign his name. As he signed, Wade felt that something invisible, like a contract, was entangled with him. Don't think you can use magic secretly at home. West finally warned. Minor wizards have traces on them. Once they use magic, they will be discovered by the Ministry of Magic immediately. Every year, there are two or three idiots who receive warning letters from the Ministry of Magic. I hope you will not be one of them. The time in school is heartbreakingly short, and the time to leave school comes almost in the blink of an eye. When the first-year students lined up and left behind Hagrid, the few students who chose to stay in school stood by the window and looked at them with envy. But in fact, Wade is also envious of these students, they can stay in school freely for two weeks, have almost exclusive access to the library and potions classroom, and can consult professors at any time, which is almost a one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Vader sighed. If Fiona hadn't been looking forward to the day he came home a month ago, Wade would have really wanted to stay in school. Of course, it feels good to be home. After being away from home for half a year, the longing and love accumulated by his parents burst out almost the moment they saw him. Fiona hugged him at least ten times a day and kissed his forehead lovingly from time to time. Ferdinand was a little more reserved, but he touched his hair and patted his shoulders from time to time. During the few months at school, Wade grew three centimeters taller. Because he climbs stairs all day long and sits for a long time, he will exercise for ten minutes to half an hour. Over time, his body becomes stronger and he can even see more obvious abdominal muscles. But all these good changes can only be seen in two words in Fiona's eyes, lost weight. Mother touched Wade's face and said distress Edley, did you not eat enough at school? Just wait, I will prepare a big table of delicious food for you today. She was ready to get to work. Wade looked at the mirror, the 11-year-old boy in the mirror still had some baby fat on his face that had not faded away. He looked a little round, fair and rosy, and looked good. Ferdinand sat next to Wade and asked with a very serious look on his face. Bede, in your letters you have always only reported the good news but not the bad news. Now tell me the truth, is anyone in school giving you a hard time? Wade also said seriously. No, this is true. Ravenclaw itself is an independent college. Most of the classmates only care about ability, not many people care about blood, and I have been in several I am the first in my grade in every class. Professor Flitwick, the dean of our college, likes me very much, and Professor Murray. He devotes two hours a week to teaching me alchemy, and even invited me to join him before the holidays, as private party. That's good, it sounds like you have met some good teachers. Ferdinand smiled. Are you happy in school? Of course, Wade smiled. I'm very happy. Before Christmas, Wade mailed out all the gifts. When he woke up the next morning, he came downstairs and saw gift boxes piled under the Christmas tree. Fiona walked over to him, hugged his head, kissed his forehead hard, and said happily, Thank you, dear. I like the gift you gave me very much. Vader gave her a bottle of beauty potion he brewed himself, which was a finished product approved by Professor Snape. Ferdinand also nodded, a great magic razor. But does the parchment you put in the gift box have any special use? This is the alchemy work I completed independently, the Book of Friends. Wade said with a bit of pride. He took out a book that he had bound by himself from his pocket. On the cover was written, Book of Friends, in both Chinese and English. When he opened it, the top of the horizontal line on the first page was the handwritten word, family. On the right side, name, is written in smaller font, followed by a horizontal line. Wade took out a quill pen and gave each of his parents one, and wrote his name on the right side of the pen. Our three friend accounts are related. Write the name like this, and then I write what I want to say here. He wrote a line in the blank space below the line, Merry Christmas. Fiona let out a small exclamation, and saw a line of words appearing on the parchment in her hand. Bade. Merry Christmas. Close black lens bracket. Oh, I get it. Fiona quickly wrote her name in the upper right corner, and then wrote below, Merry Christmas, baby. Close black lens bracket. 
The same words also appeared on the parchment of father and son. Ferdinand understood. It's like a forum. Home computers have been around for many years, and the price only costs a few hundred pounds. Naturally, the Gray family bought one early, as they are all familiar with computers. Yes, it's like an internet forum. Vader spread his hands, because the carrier is just a piece of paper, it seems a little more magical. It can't transmit video and sound. In fact, it's not as good as the internet, but it is not affected by the magic magnetic field, so that you can contact me at any time even if I am at school. To be more precise, Book of Friends, is a magical version of WeChat. It's just that nowadays, things like MSN Messenger, WhatsApp, QQ, WeChat, etc. have not yet been developed, which makes Wade's, Book of Friends, very advanced. I have to say, this is the best Christmas gift I've received this year, Vader. Ferdinand's eyes sparkled, but what's even better than this is that you really learned something at Hogwarts. I'm proud of you, kid. Fiona soon became addicted to, online chat, like most people who come into contact with communication software for the first time. Even if Vader and Ferdinand were less than two meters away from her, she would always use the friend account to communicate. Soon, text began to appear on other pages of Vader's friendship book. The second page is associated with SSC members. Michael. Hello. Close black lens bracket. Padma. Merlin, I really saw what you wrote. Closing square bracket. Hermione, can you see what I wrote too? Oh my god, it really appeared. How did you do that? I didn't see a similar spell in the book. Closing square bracket. Padma. Forget about the book, Hermione, today is Christmas, you should be happy. Closing square bracket. Michael. Wade, I thought you were just starting to learn alchemy. You should have told me earlier that you made such a great thing. Closing square bracket. Theo. I read the instructions and just figured out how to use it, it's amazing. This is the best magic item I've ever seen. Closing square bracket. Ryan. I'm so shocked that I don't know what to say. Just write a sentence to prove that I saw it. Closing square bracket. Neville. I accidentally fell off the sofa, and my grandma thought I received some dark magic item and almost confiscated it. Closing square bracket. Wade. Merry Christmas, everyone. Closing square bracket. His words seemed to ignite the frying pan, and everyone's messages popped up one after another. They soon discovered that the space occupied by each line of text was limited. It would take about one or two seconds for each sentence to disappear after reading. At most, only 15 lines of text could be displayed on the page at the same time. The online chat was forcibly limited in speed, so that there would not be a situation where 999 plus unread messages appeared in just a few minutes. In a few minutes, they quickly learned to send emoticons without any guidance, and it seemed that they would not be able to stop for a while. Wade turned to the third page, which was the house elves page. The house elves who had a close relationship with him all received one. They carefully tried to write words on the parchment and wrote many words of gratitude to Wade. Next came Professor Murray, Professor Flitwick, Professor Sprout, Professor McGonagall and Professor Snape. Except for Snape who gave a, barely usable, evaluation and Professor Murray reconfirmed the invitation in two days, everyone else praised his wonderful ideas and said that they could also tutor him during the holidays. After a while, the friend account gradually became quiet again, and Wade guessed that they might be busy creating other chat groups. Among the Christmas gifts he gave, of course, there was not only the book of friends related to himself, but also blank parchments related to two people, three people, four people, and five people. The professors also added an extra the stack is for ten people, and together it is a thick booklet, so it can be called a book. In Vader's vision, in the future, students at Hogwarts will all have a book of friends, and they will exchange parchments with friends or family members and establish large and small chat groups. Maybe Hogwarts will add a school rule soon, you are not allowed to open the friend's account during class time, and it will be confiscated if you violate it. Or maybe students will compare the thickness and value of their friend accounts. In order to save face, some students will buy blank parchment and put it in it, pretending that they have joined many chat groups. But Professor Murray asked him not to sell the book of friends for the time being. Seeing that a road with, a long way to make money, was cut off, Wade sighed dejectedly. 
Put away the friends list and start opening your own gifts for this year. Among the many gift boxes under the Christmas tree, most come from Ferdinand's employees. Wade has been wandering around the toy factory with his father since he was a child. He is smart, sensible, and cute. Many old employees like him very much. Even though they haven't seen him for more than half a year, they still send him gifts. They gave away various toys popular among ordinary people, exquisite pens and notebooks, children's books, etc. Some of them were gifts given to him by Wade's muggle classmates in elementary school. These were relatively simple, most of them were candies, greeting cards and small toys. These are things he receives every year, and of course Wade gives them gifts of similar value in advance. Then came the gift from the Wizarding World. Unlike Wade who sent everyone away with the same gift, the gifts everyone gave him were various books. Professor Murray gave him a handwritten alchemy notebook, which Wade carefully put away and planned to read after dinner. Professor Flitwick gave him a copy of, the Encyclopedia of Spells, this book requires the professor's approval in the Hogwarts library before it can be borrowed, and Vader also planned to take time to read it during the holidays. Michael gave a copy of, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Hermione gave, The Alchemist, Padma's gift was Gilderoy Lockhart's, Wandering with Werewolves, Theo's gift was, The World's Oldest Man, Magic Plants, Ryan's, The Beauty of the Starry Sky, Neville's, The Secret of Transfiguration. Perhaps his image of loving reading was deeply ingrained in everyone's minds, and everyone unanimously chose to give him books. It seems that he is quite busy this holiday. Hogwarts. When Dumbledore got up in the morning, even the shoes placed by his bed were inundated with gifts. He has been a professor at Hogwarts for almost a century and has taught countless students. Almost 80% of the wizards in the British Isles are his students. And he is also the president of the International Federation of Wizards, the chief wizard of the Wizengamot, and is recognized as the greatest wizard of our time and the greatest headmaster of Hogwarts ever, although Dumbledore himself is not so fond of these titles and accolades. He cares, but obviously, most people care about it. There are wizards all over the world who want to have a good relationship with him. So every Christmas, Dumbledore would receive many, many, many gifts that could almost overwhelm the headmaster's tower. Fortunately, he used the traceless stretching charm very well. So Dumbledore usually spent the entire week after Christmas opening presents. This is an activity he enjoys. Of course, Dumbledore was not motivated by the value of the gift itself, but because he could see some people's growth, some people's desires, and occasionally some small surprises, maybe a curse, or maybe a harmless one, prank. Most people who didn't know him would give him books out of respect for the wizard, muggle and wizard books, many of which Dumbledore had already read, but still happily accepted them. People who know him well know that this old man is a hopeless lover of sweets. His gifts are often cakes, chocolates, piles of cockroaches, sizzling bees and other sweets, and some of them contain deadly potions. Their process was a fairly interesting game for Dumbledore. There are also some people who, even though they don't normally communicate with each other, still have gifts given on this special day. Even if it was just a piece of paper, a leaf, or a pair of unsightly wool socks that smelled like sheep, Dumbledore would treasure them with great care. Just as Dumbledore was opening a gift box that was half a man's height, an owl suddenly flew in through the window and dropped a small package on Dumbledore's lap. Could it be that someone just remembered him when he woke up in the morning and then gave him a replacement gift? Dumbledore thought like this, put down the gift box, and opened the small package first. There was only a piece of parchment and a long thin note. Dear Albus, this is the work of my student, Vader Gray. I am extremely proud to share my joy with you. Best wishes. Maury. Even the, all-knowing, Dumbledore was confused by this letter without beginning or end. He unfolded the parchment and looked at both sides, making sure that there was nothing written on it except Moray's own name. Dumbledore was about to use a spell to check it when someone else came to visit him. Dumbledore walked to the hallway, and Phileas Flitwick stood at the door, holding a similar parchment in his hand, and said happily, Oh, Professor Dumbledore, this is my one. I have to say, I knew he would achieve extraordinary success, but I didn't expect it to be so early. He has only been learning magic for three and a half months. Wade Gray. Dumbledore asked tentatively. Yes, who else could it be? 
Professor Flitwick walked away with a brisk step and humming a song. Dumbledore looked down and saw that there was still nothing on the parchment Flitwick gave him except Flitwick's name. Then came Pomona Sprout. I thought, who else can I give this to besides you? The witch smiled gently and said, I look forward to your contact at any time. Then it was Minerva McGonagall. She saw that Dumbledore already had a small stack in his hand, and handed him one with some displeasure. Oh, I thought I was the first one, but Pomona was so quick. In fact, she opened the other gifts first, and when she found this one, it was a little late. The last one was Snape, who handed over a notebook directly. Humph. The potions professor said coldly, I kept my own one, and I don't need the others, useless contacts will only waste my time. Dumbledore. So everyone has one, only he doesn't know what it is. Wait, Severus. When Snape was about to turn around and leave, Dumbledore stopped him and asked frankly, what is this? He raised the parchment in his hand. Snape was stunned for a moment, and then his eyes became a little strange. You don't know. Obviously, I'm not as omniscient as people boast. In fact, I often feel that I know too little. Snape looked up and down at Dumbledore, as if he saw a giant monster dancing ballet on tiptoe. The corners of his mouth curved slightly, as if mocking or gloating. It's really strange, someone actually gave me a Christmas present, but not to the great Dumbledore. Snape's harsh tone did not change Dumbledore's color. The old headmaster just drew out his wand and waved it at the gift boxes in the room. The potions professor couldn't help but look over his shoulder. The gift boxes swayed slightly, and then stopped. Dumbledore sighed regretfully and said, it seems that there really is none. Oh. Snape responded dryly. He had just seen it. Dumbledore's room was piled high with gifts, almost to the ceiling. Thinking of the few gift boxes in his bedroom, Snape suddenly lost the mood to laugh. In fact, he didn't care about the number of gifts at all, he just didn't want to see other people's unintentional boasting faces. Snape flicked his finger, and a note shot at Dumbledore like a bullet. This is the instruction manual. When Dumbledore caught the note, Snape had already turned around and strode away. The white-bearded headmaster pushed his glasses, then looked down, and soon figured out how to use it. Oh, can it replace the invention of the muggle phone? Very interesting idea. He chanted a spell and checked the magic on the parchment, or the friend's book. Ingenious idea, genius combination. It seems that Mr. Gray's study of alchemy has begun to bear fruit, and he is very talented, no wonder Murray is so proud. Thinking that he was the only one who did not receive a gift, Dumbledore recalled the expressions of several children that day and vaguely understood something. So that's it. A smart and sensitive child. Is that so? Unlike Harry, this child should not like to be guided by others. He seemed to be talking to himself, but soon, an old, subtle voice sounded in the room. Ralph rarely sees such an 11-year-old child. The voice said, a bit like Albus Dumbledore at the time, also like Tom Riddle at the time, smart insightful, and different. Dumbledore looked down and said modestly, oh, then you have overestimated me a bit. When I was 11 years old, I knew as much about alchemy as all ordinary children. At the point where his eyes fell, standing in front of the fireplace was a very old house elf. His skin was wrinkled, and he was wrapped in a tea towel with the Hogwarts emblem. His ears were full of fluffy white hair. He was so thin that his body seemed to be easily broken, but his big green eyes were very clear. He said in a whispering voice, Albus Dumbledore is so arrogant. He said this, which means he is different from others and thinks he should know everything. Don't be so blunt, dear Ralph. Dumbledore said helplessly, you see me too clearly, and often make me feel ashamed. He wiped his glasses, sat in front of the table, and asked softly, help me sort out these gifts, okay. I need to write something. Ralph is willing to serve, master. The house elf bowed, stepped back a few steps, and stretched out his slender fingers. The gift boxes piled in the room unpacked themselves, the books quickly got into the bookshelf and arranged neatly, and the clean food jumped into the cabinet, and the cabinet door closed with a, click. Various greeting cards and letters fell into several boxes and were neatly stacked on the table, waiting for Dumbledore to check them when he had time. Other items were placed in various corners of the room. As for the problematic gifts, they gathered together and were ruthlessly squeezed and crushed by magic. Not long after, 
Ralph disappeared from the room with these, garbage, and things like wrapping paper. There were only two or three gift boxes left on the table that were not opened, only Dumbledore could open them personally. While the elves were busy, Dumbledore wrote his name on each friend's book, Albus Dumbledore. All the professors who stayed in school during the Christmas holidays had no family, and they might not even have relatives. They all chose to give one of their friends' books, which were limited to one-to-one -one contact, to Dumbledore. So Dumbledore, who did not receive a friend's book as a gift on Christmas, still had a thicker, friend's book, than anyone else this morning. After putting away the friend book, Dumbledore sat at the table and thought for a long time. The light and shadow of the years passed before his eyes, creating ripples in the depths of his blue eyes. Are they similar? Of course they are very similar. Thinking back carefully, the look in the eyes of Weed Gray in the crowd that day was so similar to his younger self. But Dumbledore would never forget how he had messed up his life. After pondering for a long time, he carefully picked up the pen and wrote a letter. Dear Murray. I have received the gift brought by your owl. I have to say that it is very clever, even great. It is hard to imagine that this is the work of an 11-year-old child. Of course, its composition is actually simple and easy to understand to some extent. But it is even more amazing because of its simplicity. I think you can understand what I mean. I can almost see that it will bring earth-shaking changes to the wizarding world in the future. To be honest, this makes me happy and scared. For such a talented child, what kind of education should we give him? The last time I met such a smart and terrifying student was 50 years ago. You should also remember that student, Tom Riddle. I will not be so arrogant as to think that my personal attitude determines Voldemort's life. But I have to admit that my education of him was undoubtedly a failure. A talented precocious person, his emotions were restrained by his thoughts, and he was isolated by his own wisdom. Dot dot. Even if he stood among countless people, he was lonely, because his mind and sharpness would make it easier for him to see the selfishness, greed, ugly desires, and paranoid arrogance in human nature. He would keep a certain distance from others, and use humor, kindness, or politeness to disguise his inner disappointment and indifference to human nature. He would be more likely to lose his way than those clumsy children. You know, I'm not just talking about Tom Riddle, nor just Wade Gray. Therefore, I have some perhaps immature suggestions for your student Wade. Dear friend, when we adults face children who are much younger than us, we often become unconsciously arrogant because we have more knowledge and experience. We look down on those children with a sense of superiority, holding absolute power like a monarch, instilling the information we want them to know, keeping the information we think they should not know, manipulating them with words, and guiding them in the direction we want to see. What arrogance is this? What's more dangerous is that we often don't realize this arrogance. Because we think we are making the right decisions to make them, better people. I can't say that this is absolutely wrong, because children's thoughts are often immature, and they don't know how to restrain their words and actions. If they are not properly guided, they can easily go astray and cause harm to themselves and others. But for students like Wade Gray, ordinary education may only have the opposite effect. If I have learned anything from my many years of failed education, it is that love is the most difficult and powerful magic in the world. It is mysterious and hard to guess, but it can change everything and decide everything. On Christmas Day, the Gray family had a big meal, watched a musical, and took a lot of photos. The old-fashioned camera used was a Christmas gift from Ferdinand to Vader, and Fiona's gift was a developing potion. This is a camera I bought in Diagon Alley. They said it can also be used in Hogwarts. Ferdinand said with a smile, this way you can take pictures of your life in school. The owner of the ice cream shop in Diagon Alley told me that as long as I use the correct developing potion, the people in the photos will move. Fiona said excitedly, so what are you waiting for? Let's take pictures today. But after taking the photos, they discovered that even a small thing like developing photos required a wand, but Vader couldn't use magic at home. Looking at the disappointed Fiona, Wade suggested, Actually, we can go to the Leaky Cauldron and stay for one night, there are many adult wizards there. Even if magic is used, the Ministry of Magic can't determine who did it. Received a warning letter. Fiona was a little moved, but she still shook her head. Forget it, if you are discovered, it will have a bad impact on you. Anyway, 
you will be back to school in a few days. As she spoke, she became sad. Before Wade left, she was already missing him. Ferdinand frowned and said, Bade, is the accuracy of the Ministry of Magic's law enforcement very low? We can only monitor the use of magic by underage wizards within a general range. As for other things, Vader thought about the Ministry of Magic's performance in the plot that the Ministry of Magic's hips are getting bigger year by year, other things are like not very good either. Don't despise the Ministry of Magic, Vader. Ferdinand warned, there is no law enforcement agency that is not a violent agency. If you cannot face it, it is easy to make wrong judgments. Wade said seriously, I understand, Dad. Indeed, the Ministry of Magic, which he now despises, can imprison Dumbledore's professors in Azkaban and also has the power to expel students from Hogwarts. This power has not been weakened much because of the bloat, corruption and incompetence of the Ministry of Magic. On the contrary, incompetent and corrupt people prefer to abuse their power. The next day, the Gray family got up early because they were going shopping in Diagon Alley today, which was destined to take a long time. Still going to Gringotts to change money first, Ferdinand had already prepared a heavy bag. Those goblins don't like paper money. He explained to Wade, if it is paper money, it can only be exchanged for 20 galleons at most. The amount of coins is higher, but if you use gold, there is no limit. The goblins all very fond of gold. I don't need that much money, Dad. Vader persuaded, Hogwarts provides food and housing, and some students only need 10 galleons a year. That's because they can only buy second-hand goods. They can't buy snacks. They even have to save ink. Ferdinand touched his head. Your shortcoming is that you are too sensible, Wade, sometimes you can be more arbitrary. And aren't you learning alchemy? Fiona shook her finger. Don't try to lie to me. Even if I don't know magic, I know that it will definitely cost a lot of money to learn alchemy, and Hogwarts doesn't do it either. Maybe we can provide you with all kinds of materials for practice without any restrictions. Wade pursed his lips and said softly, Thank you, Dad, Mom, I love you. He has been introverted since he was a child, and it is difficult for him to say, I love you, an expression that ordinary children are accustomed to. Upon hearing this, Mr. and Mrs. Gray were very surprised. They looked at each other and couldn't help but smile. I love you too, baby. Fiona said softly. On the way afterwards, Fiona kept holding Vader's hand tightly. Switching to galleons, Ferdinand left for a while, and Fiona accompanied Vader to Madame Malkin's robe shop. Hogwarts uniforms are all loose robes, and they still fit well even if Vader has grown three centimeters taller. But considering that he would definitely continue to grow taller next semester, Fiona decided to order two more uniforms for him. I also need a dress robe. Fiona said when discussing the lining style with Mrs. Malkin, just a simple one. The color shouldn't be too showy. Wade doesn't like it. We should get it this afternoon at the latest. If you can't make it in time, ready-made clothes are also available. Dress robe. Wade, who is serving as a clothing display stand nearby, said. Silly question, Vader. Fiona said softly, as if speaking to a child. When you go to Professor Murray's party tomorrow, are you still going to wear the school uniform? Oh, you should have been earlier tell me so I can customize a suitable one. Vader actually felt that there was nothing wrong with Hogwarts robes, and the gowns displayed in Madame Malkin's robe shop were very similar to his school robes. Of course, this cannot be said, otherwise Fiona will use at least a thousand words to prove that there is a huge difference between them. Vader could only keep his mouth shut obediently and listen to Mrs. Malkin say to his mother, Don't worry, Mrs. Gray, I guarantee that you will get his new robe at 3 o'clock in the afternoon at the latest. Let's take a look at the dress first. Style. Which color do you like? Ah, this color matches his skin tone very well. Your aesthetic is really good. What are the requirements for accessories for boys? It doesn't need to be too complicated or too many, it's noble and elegant, the best. Mom. Wade couldn't help but said. Fiona looked back at her son, sighed regretfully in his protesting eyes, put down the useless but shiny things such as necklaces, bracelets, and rings inlaid with gems in her hands, and said, just choose cufflinks. Well, just cufflinks, nothing else is needed. Mrs. Malkin put away the other things with a smile, without any sign of impatience, and spent a long time with Fiona choosing cufflinks. 
They finally decided on the dress, and Madame Malkin said as if she suddenly remembered, My dear, little Mr. Gray can't wear his old shoes with his new dress, can he? Do you want to take a look at our latest dragon skin? Boots. Vader stared blankly at the ceiling, regretting that he had not brought a book with him, he was now looking forward to having other guests come in, so that Madame Malkin would be busy. Otherwise, Fiona could spend the whole day here. Suddenly the doorbell rang, and Wade immediately turned his head, only to see Ferdinand coming in with a newspaper. Ferdinand nodded to Wade and asked, you haven't bought the clothes yet, okay. Nothing. Wade couldn't help but sigh, I'm choosing shoes. It took a lot of effort for him to resist the urge to complain to his father. Have you taken the measurements? I measured it as soon as I walked in. That's good. Ferdinand said to his wife, Fiona, you choose slowly, and I will take Wade to buy other things. You have ordered the clothes and are waiting for us at Madame Malkin's place. Fiona waved her hand and said, okay. Don't make me wait too long. When Gray and his son went out, Ferdinand said to his son, I ordered the Daily Prophet, I ordered a copy for you, and they will send it to the school by Owl. From now on, you must get used to paying attention to political affairs. Vader nodded. The father and son walked around Diagon Alley and bought other things in less than half an hour. Wade also left the names and catalogs of several shop owners so that he could use L to buy the items he needed after arriving at school. Especially potion materials, Hogwarts only provides the most basic ones for free, and rare and expensive materials are only provided in small quantities when taking relevant courses. It is impossible for young wizards like him to practice freely. When they returned to the robe shop, Fiona had just chosen her shoes and was sitting drinking tea while flipping through a magazine called, Wizard Weekly. When she heard the bell ringing at the door, she turned her head and immediately smiled brightly. Wade smiled. Before he could speak, he saw Ferdinand, who was walking behind him, striding over. He lowered his head and asked softly, Have you finished shopping? Are you tired? Fiona, who had not stepped out of the robe shop, stretched her arms and said, Yeah, shopping is really tiring, what should we eat for lunch? Isn't there a good French restaurant nearby? How about eating there? Order a foie gras steak and grilled cod. On the day when Professor Murray held a party, Wade changed into the dress and dragonhide boots that Fiona carefully selected for him after breakfast. He stood in front of the mirror and Fiona circled him, adjusting some details from time to time. So handsome, baby. Fiona kept uttering all kinds of exaggerated praises. You are definitely the most dazzling little gentleman at the party. Seriously, why don't you just let me pick out the necklace for you to wear? The bow and arrow shaped pendant is super cool and will definitely make other kids jealous. No. Mom, I'm not a three-year-old child. Wade firmly refused without hesitation. Fiona sighed. I didn't want to wear it even when I was three years old. So when I was 11 I didn't even know how to wear one. Ferdinand raised his wrist to check the time from time to time, and looked out the door from time to time. The professor said he would pick you up at 10 o'clock, right? He confirmed with his son. Yes, that's what the letter said. But it was one minute before 10 o'clock, and there was still no one outside the door. Are you late? Fiona guessed. Maybe there is something delayed. Ferdinand looked at the door again. I just hope they don't suddenly appear at the door. That's not possible. There are ordinary people around here. How many people will see that? Fiona said firmly, it must have been delayed by something. Maybe we will receive an owl soon. The letter came. Fiona said, running over and opening a window so that the owl could fly in. Just when she turned around, the flame in the fireplace suddenly turned green, making the whole room green, and then a dark shadow came out of the fireplace. Ferdinand jumped up, quickly reached behind his clothes with his right hand and pulled out his pistol, and pushed Vader back with the other hand, shouting, who is it? No dad, it's Professor Murray. Wade hurriedly grabbed his arm, and suddenly found that his father's palm was very cold. He looked over in surprise and found that Ferdinand was clenching his teeth, the veins on his neck were popping out, and his tense expression looked very cold and unfamiliar. Wade was stunned for a moment. From the moment he received the acceptance letter to Hogwarts, the Greys had always seemed very happy. They are full of curiosity about the world of magic and eagerly participate in the world here. They know almost more about the wizarding world than Vader. Vader had always thought that was the case. 
But at this moment, he suddenly discovered that his father might have always hidden a deep fear of the wizarding world. Fiona was only startled at first, but calmed down after hearing Wade's words. She took a few steps forward and asked curiously, is this flow travel? Ferdinand walked over quickly, as if he and his wife were going to greet the guests. But Wade saw that he was actually standing in front of Fiona. Stepping out of the flames was indeed Professor Murray. He patted the soot on his body and said with a smile, yes, it is a safe and convenient way to travel. Except for the soot, everything is fine, hello, Mr. Gray, Mrs. Gray, I am Terence Murray, I think you should know. Of course, Ferdinand had already put away his pistol, and there was nothing strange on his face, welcome, Professor Murray. I'm sorry, my fireplace has not been thoroughly cleaned in more than two years. Fiona poked her head out from behind him and asked, can we travel on fire too? Oh, probably not, Professor Murray said with a smile. Actually, the Ministry of Magic prohibits connecting the fireplaces of non-magical people's homes to the flow network. In order to pick up Vader, I asked someone to temporarily open the flow network for me. The authority of the network will be restored after we leave, Vader, I'm glad to see you are ready. Yes, Professor. Vader glanced at his parents, put his wand into the wand pocket on his dress robe, walked over and said, shall we leave now? Of course, the guests are waiting for us. Professor Murray magically pulled out a small bag containing sparkling powder and asked, have you ever used flow powder? No, Professor. It's easy, just watch what I do. He handed the bag to Wade, picked up a handful of powder and threw it into the fire. Suddenly the flames turned green. Remember, you must state the address clearly, Suo Luo Garden. Close your eyes and don't wander around in the fireplace, otherwise you will get bruised and bruised, and you may even come out from other fireplaces. Professor Murray walked straight into the fire and demonstrated, the Cypress Garden. He disappeared from the fire with a whoosh. Wade also pinched a handful of flow powder and walked towards the fireplace. When he was about to throw it away, he turned back, looked at his father deeply and said, Dad, I'll be back in the evening. Yeah. Ferdinand's throat rolled, he wanted to say something but held back, and looked down at him, follow your professor, don't conflict with others. I understand. Wade nodded seriously. Fiona put her hands on her hips and pretended to be angry. I only want to say goodbye to my father, but not my mother. How could it be? Wade smiled, stepped forward and hugged his mother, goodbye, mom. He sprinkled the flow powder, and the flames immediately turned a green color. Vader suppressed his instinctive fear of flames and walked in as if he was used to it. The flames surrounded him like warm breath. Through the firelight, Wade saw the remaining panic in his father's eyes. It is the uneasiness and fear caused by a stranger suddenly breaking into a harbor that one always thought was safe. Alpinia Garden. Wade said clearly as he looked at his father. In an instant, both parents and the living room disappeared from sight. He rotated rapidly in the green flames, and countless fireplaces flashed by quickly. Vader immediately closed his eyes. When he was spinning so dizzy, the extremely fast rotation suddenly stopped again, and when Vader was about to fall, a pair of strong arms supported him. It's not a good feeling, is it? A voice said, I heard that this is your first time using the flow network. The man pulled him out of the fireplace. Wade coughed twice, rubbed away the cigarette ashes that accidentally got into his eyes, and saw a big man standing in front of him. He was very tall, about two meters tall, with a burly build and a somewhat fierce appearance, but his eyes looked gentle when he bent down to look at him. Ahem, sorry, who are you? Wade asked. A water glass was passed in front of him. Drink some water. The big man took out his wand and used clean up, and the dust on Vader's body immediately disappeared. He said, I am Stephen Murray, the son of Terence Murray. My father was originally waiting for you here, but a friend from France has just arrived, and he wants to greet him, you can just walk around first, eat something. Stephen was probably given the task by his father to entertain the guest at the party, that is, Wade. He had been accompanying the little wizard and did not seem impatient. However, the huge height difference between the two sides obviously made the guests who saw them feel very funny. From time to time, someone looked at them and laughed. Stephen pretended not to see anything and accompanied Wade to visit the Alsafilla Garden. 
The garden was neat and tidy, and the long pale yellow table was filled with a variety of food and drinks for the guests to take. The party was held around a fountain. In the center of the fountain was a mermaid statue, a very beautiful mermaid in the legend, with a graceful figure and a glittering fish tail, and a moving chanting from her mouth. There were also small dancer statues on the stone railings around them. They danced tirelessly, and small golden light balls were spinning and splashing around. Wade reached out and gently touched a light ball. It was punctured like a bubble, and his fingers felt a little cool. The green grass around was freshly trimmed, like a layer of green and fluffy carpet. Various kinds of flowers are planted around the fountain and in the flower beds. The clusters of blooming flowers are crowded together, which looks particularly gorgeous. Some flowers can only be seen in spring and summer, but they bloom here regardless of the season. On both sides of the road, some tall trees with crowns like giant umbrellas are planted. This is the origin of the name of, Althea Garden, Althea. Stephen proudly introduced this plant to him. Their history can be traced back to at least 200 million years ago, earlier than dinosaurs. They are real living fossils. The Mori family has a house elf who is responsible for taking care of these Althea trees. Halfway through the tour, a paper crane flew over and suddenly opened its mouth to speak the voice of Professor Mori. Stephen, bring Wade to the small stone platform. Okay. Stephen responded, and the paper crane landed on his shoulder and suddenly tilted his head, as if looking at Wade next to him. Stephen saw Wade staring at the paper crane and smiled and said, this is my father's work. He once went to Japan to exchange ideas with the magic school and found that the students there liked to fold these small paper cranes. After returning, he began to use paper cranes to send messages. Later, the Ministry of Magic introduced it, but they thought paper cranes were too troublesome, so they changed to paper airplanes, they are neither flexible, nor can they speak, nor are they beautiful. The only advantage is that they are very cheap. Ministry of Magic. Wade thought for a moment and asked, so what did they use to send messages before paper airplanes? Two-way mirrors are too expensive, it can't be the flow network, right? Use owls. Stephen said with a smile, you can imagine, dozens of owls flying around the office, or filling the elevator, with feces and feathers everywhere, I saw it once when I was a child, it was a disaster. Wade finally understood why he unconsciously looked down on the Ministry of Magic in his tone. Anyone who has seen those officials being troubled by all feces would probably not respect them. The small stone platform is a small garden with a foundation two or three feet higher. There are white marble steps, lavender peach leaf bell-shaped flowers fluttering in the wind, delphiniums and geraniums scattered around, and mosses crawling on the brick walls. The air is particularly fresh and pleasant. In addition to Professor Murray, there are only five or six people in the garden, all of whom are dressed gorgeously and look prominent. They heard the sound and turned their heads to look over. Everyone's actions were very consistent. They first saw the tall Stephen, and then their eyes fell down together and found Wade, who looked like a dwarf compared to the former. Oh, Wade, my child. Professor Murray came over happily, completely ignoring his real child. He directly put his hand on Wade's shoulder and took him to the crowd. This is my new student this year, a real student, Wade Gray. Everyone nodded and smiled at Wade. A man with brown curly hair complimented, it seems that this child must be gifted to be appreciated by you at such a young age. Professor Murray nodded and said, he is only in the first grade, but his alchemy level has surpassed yours when you graduate, Marchioni. Others laughed. Obviously everyone knew that although this man named Marchioni took alchemy as an elective, his level was really not very good. It was probably a headache for Professor Murray when he was in school. Marchioni smiled and was not embarrassed. He looked at Wade seriously. Professor Murray seemed to think that the previous sentence was not convincing, so he immediately gave another example. This child relied on self-study to memorize the entire contents of magic pronunciation table, magic symbol collection, runic dictionary, and ancient magic simple introduction, it only took two months. Wow. Now everyone finally understood the weight of gifted talent. They had basically taken ancient magic classes and even alchemy classes, and they knew how difficult it was to remember those crooked symbols and weird syllables. If nothing else, at least this child has surpassed 99% of people in memory and diligence. Not only that. Professor Murray dragged out his tone, with pride, 
deliberately putting the most important part at the end, and several people cooperated to make a very interested listening posture. Wade observed silently. Although he didn't know the identities of these people, it was obvious that he had seen Professor Murray's status very clearly. He has only been studying with me for more than a month, and he has already made his first work. I swear, he did it completely on his own, and I didn't point out a single letter. Professor Murray showed off loudly, as if revealing the winning lottery numbers, and slowly took out a brand new, book of friends, let it hang in the middle of everyone, and asked with a smile, can anyone guess it? Purpose. Book of friends. Several people looked at each other, gathered around the friend's tent in an orderly manner, and took out their wands to check. The friend's tent was shrouded in various lights over and over again. However, Professor Murray added a protective spell to this book of friends, and ordinary detection spells cannot detect the magical structure in it. Two people soon gave up. They were not interested in a child at all, and they didn't think he would make any powerful alchemy products. They were just touting him to please Professor Murray. The rest of the people examined it for a while. The man named Marchioni's eyes suddenly lit up, he picked off a leaf and turned it into a quill, and wrote a line of words on the paper. Money is a bottomless sea, I want to swim in it. Then he turned back quickly, and the more he turned, the more fanatical he looked. The people around him didn't take it seriously at first, and then gradually their eyes widened and they kept swallowing. Professor Murray showed a smile that said, everything is under control. No, sir, this number is not good. It's a bit too much. Professor, please consider me, business is not good now, can we share some profits? It's just the idea that is clever, but it's easy to copy. You should know how rampant piracy is. If the cost is too high, people would rather buy fakes. I can't make much money. Two-way mirrors and flow powder can replace its function. It may not be as popular as you think. We are just testing the waters at the beginning. No one knows how it will sell. If you ask too high, I can only give up. The crowd surrounded Professor Murray, talking one after another, as if they were besieging him. When Marchioni started to quote, Wade was finally sure that Professor Murray's party was actually a new product launch for his book of friends. No wonder he didn't let Wade sell the book of friends himself at school if the information of similar products was leaked in advance, it might not have achieved the results today. And Wade can only earn a little pocket money from students by doing small things at school, how can he compare with the efficiency of these, multinational companies? Each of these strange wizards in the small garden can be called the head of a, multinational company, because of the existence of the flow network and the port key, it is much easier for wizards to cross different countries than muggles. And with the traceless extension spell, the cost of logistics and transportation can be ignored, so wizards can easily sell goods to different countries and even different continents. Wade followed Professor Murray and watched him argue with these wizards about how much the patent license for the, friend's book, should pay. Someone proposed to buy it out directly with 100,000 galleons, and was almost kicked out by Professor Murray. He raised it all the way to 200,000 galleons, but Professor Murray insisted on not agreeing and was only willing to sell the right to use it. At this time, these wizards no longer flattered and respected Professor Murray before, but negotiated with great care, some pestered, some were picky, some pretended to give up, and some began to play the emotional card, but Professor Murray was like a stone pillar in the river hit by water from all directions, and was not shaken at all. He started by asking for an incredibly high price, and then bargained with these people little by little, constantly showing the advantages of the book of friends. Fast, convenient, low price, wizards all over the world will buy it, and will buy it repeatedly throughout their lives. Dot dot. Do you know how beautiful and stable its structure is? Counterfeit items will not have the stability of the Book of Friends at all, if you don't believe it, try it yourself. Your transformation spell may be ineffective if it exceeds 50 meters, and it is impossible to transmit complex information. Some people saw that they couldn't convince Professor Murray, so they simply bypassed him and came to Wade. But Wade just smiled and didn't say anything, as if he was shy, hiding behind Professor Murray. He knew that at the age of 11, there was no need to be so smooth, mature, and sharp, just leave everything to adults. And he also knew his own limitations, because if it was just Wade himself, he might have directly agreed to the 100,000 galleons buyout price. 
After all, before this, Wade's best idea for, friend's book, was to earn a few hundred or a thousand galleons from his classmates at Hogwarts, and that would require him to make a large number of friend's books in the dormitory day and night, like an assembly line worker. But now, he was about to sit on the capitalist's table. Of course, the decision-making power was handed over because the adult in front of him was trustworthy and would really consider him. Wade looked up and looked at Professor Murray, who was firing on all cylinders for him. The old man's thin back was like a tall cliff, and Wade's eyes were a little confused and complicated. Seeing Wade being entangled, his eyes were blank and a little pitiful, Professor Murray waved his hand and asked Stephen to take Wade out to play and not get in the way here, and then he rolled up his sleeves, looking like he was busy fighting. Stephen, who was as quiet as a plant and was once again classified as a child. He hesitated to speak, but finally closed his mouth and obediently took Wade away. After leaving, he couldn't help but sigh deeply. If you have something to do, you can go first, I can just find a place to read. Wade looked at him and said sympathetically. Who would like to play with children? He himself doesn't like it. No it's not because of you, Stephen was dejected and didn't want to say it, but under Wade's gaze, he slowly expressed his troubles. I'm already 36 years old, and my father still always treats me as a child in fact. I want to follow Mr. Scamander's footsteps, travel around the world, and be a magical zoologist. But my parents don't want to let me go far away, saying it's too dangerous. Wade looked at him puzzledly, but they didn't put you under house arrest. A man in his thirties, and a wizard, can't he leave if he wants to? If I leave without saying goodbye, my mother will be so sad, my father will definitely be angry, Stephen said worriedly. I still hope to get their understanding and support, otherwise I won't dare to come back after I leave. Wade was speechless. He didn't expect that Professor Murray's son looked like a bear, but had a soft personality like a rabbit. He thought for a while and asked, why don't you write a letter to Mr. Scamander? Write a letter. Write, what letter? I heard that Mr. Scamander has many magical animals himself. Maybe you can ask him to provide you with a job as a breeder. The salary is not important. What is important is that you can learn about magical animals from Mr. Scamander. If one day, you can deal with various magical animals as calmly as that gentleman, Professor Murray should be able to let you travel with confidence, right? Wade thought of the magical box in Scamander's hand that had multiple environments and climate changes, and felt envious from the bottom of his heart. Yes, why didn't I think of this method? Stephen was overjoyed. He was happy for a while, but hesitant then how should I write this letter? Will it be offensive? He asked seriously with anxiety, even though the person in front of him was just a child. Just tell the truth. Wade suggested, write down your worries and ideals, as well as your understanding of magical animals. This way, even if Mr. Scamander disagrees, he won't be angry about it. I just don't know if Mr. Scamander will think that the letter was written by a fresh graduate just by looking at the tone and wording of the letter. When they first met, Wade thought he was a very strong man, then he found him gentle and calm, but after getting along for a while, he felt that his true character was like a child, even simpler than many children. No wonder Professor Murray didn't dare to let him go out. If it was his own son, Wade wouldn't dare to let him go around the world alone. Although Stephen couldn't wait to write the letter, and Wade said it was okay to be alone, Stephen still did not put aside his duties and ran away. He and Wade discussed the wording of the letter for a while, and then started talking about the magical creatures he had raised. Although Professor Murray did not agree to allow him to travel to places where dangerous magical creatures lived, he did not completely reject Stephen's dream. Stephen has owned a farm since graduating from Hogwarts, and he has raised many, cuties, there over the years. Vader knew that Hagrid at Hogwarts liked to raise all kinds of dangerous creatures, such as fire dragons and so on, and called them, cute little animals. He thought that Stephen was also like this, but after learning more about it, he realized that they were really cute and basically harmless magical creatures, such as ball escapers, soundless birds, velvet velvets, fairies, swallow-tailed dogs, etc., the most dangerous of which is a bird snake. This creature can expand and contract its size at will, becoming as huge as a dragon, but it feeds on insects, birds and rats. I have always wanted to raise a growling. Stephen said, did you know? It is a type of pegasus. 
Growling can fly and run faster than the wind. But except for the mythical Sigurd no one has ever tamed the growling. Is this Pegasus difficult to tame? They are very free animals, yearning for freedom and unwilling to be restrained. Stephen said, and then talked about other Pegasus, the Thestral from Hogwarts, the Rune Horse from Bobatons, and the fire-breathing Pegasus Izerin. Some wizards look down upon any magical creatures other than wizards, viewing them as inferior animals. But Stephen was fascinated by it, and there were so many kinds of creatures. Wade felt that he had learned a lot just by chatting with him. Suddenly the arrival of a person interrupted their conversation. It was a blonde wizard who was at the small stone platform before. With a look of decadence and frustration on his face, he came over to say hello to Stephen, then looked at Wade, steeled himself and smiled. Mr. Grieg, it's a pity that we don't have the opportunity to cooperate this time. I hope that next time you have any new works, please contact me and I will definitely give you a price that satisfies you. He handed over a business card with the wizard's name and contact address written on it. Stephen raised his eyebrows and lost his smile. His originally honest and gentle expression suddenly looked a little cold. Wade took the business card and said with a smile, I hope I can have this opportunity in the future. The blonde wizard relaxed a little and hurriedly said goodbye. You're not really going to cooperate with him, are you? He called you by the wrong last name. Stephen said unhappily. Yeah, he called him by the wrong name. Wade put away the business card and said, but it doesn't matter, because I don't intend to remember him. As if the blonde wizard had turned on some switch, two more wizards came to say goodbye one after another. They said the same thing before leaving and left their business cards to Vader. But this time, they finally remembered Vader's full name. After they left, Stephen introduced in a low voice to Wade. Don't cooperate with Bolton. He seems to be easy to talk to, but in fact he is shady and often manipulates contracts. He just doesn't dare to trick my father. In other words, it would be easy for Vader to suffer a loss if he dealt with him. A wizard with a middle parted head and a beard came to say goodbye, holding a conspicuous black cane in his hand. Mr. Gray, I really appreciate your talent. Unfortunately, Professor Murray and I have big differences on price. I hope we can keep in touch and new opportunities may arise in the future. Of course, thank you for the time and energy you invested in this. Wade said, taking his business card. Cyrus Sharp this is the name of the wizard. Sharp is a very capable person, and he can always get all kinds of hard to get things, including a lot of contraband. I heard that he went to Azkaban three times when he was young, my father actually doesn't like him very much, but sometimes I buy things from him, Stephen said later. Can you come out after entering Azkaban? Vader was surprised. In his impression, Azkaban was an isolated island in the vast ocean, a prison with no entrance and no exit. Stephen misunderstood what Wade meant and explained. Well, because he is very cunning and good at covering up his crimes, each sentence is no more than half a year. Oh, well, that's it. After hearing this, Vader knew that he had made a fool, the movie only played Death Eaters who were sentenced to life imprisonment, which did not mean that Azkaban only had life imprisonment as a punishment. The wizards left one after another, and finally only Marchione was left walking out of the small stone platform, complaining loudly as he walked, Dear Professor Murray, I used to be your student, but now I feel that I am a little bit different. I have never received your preference, of course, I am not complaining, I just want to tell you that even if I leave school now, I will always respect your decision and hope that you can give me a little a little attention and care. He made a very small gap with his thumb and forefinger to show how humble his request was. Come on, when have you ever suffered a loss? Professor Murray said angrily. Indeed, although Marchione was complaining, the corners of his mouth could not be controlled and raised with a proud expression on his face. He walked up to Wade with easy and quick steps, took off his hat and bowed, and said with a smile, This is the first time we meet, Mr. Wade Gray, please allow me to introduce myself, I am Marco Marciani, I am engaged in the trading of various types of magic items. I believe that meeting you today must be a blessing, and I look forward to establishing a deep friendship with you and bringing more good changes to the wizarding world in the future, er, earn more money. Hello. Wade was startled by his exaggerated movements and subconsciously looked at Professor Murray. Professor Murray nodded and directly stated the final result, 
Marchoni is willing to pay 50,000 galleons to obtain the technical authorization for the Book of Friends. At the same time, for every gallon he earns using the Book of Friends in the future, he will pay you 3 ACK. Marchioni's bright smile suddenly became a little stiff. Obviously, although this price could still make him a lot of money, he felt heartbroken and frustrated when he thought that he might not have to pay so much. So he kept mumbling again, scolding Professor Murray for being too partial to Wade, and completely taking advantage of him as a poor businessman. Professor Murray remained unmoved, as if Marchioni's voice was just a fly buzzing next to him. He quickly made a contract and served as a witness to urge Marchioni and Wade to make the contract. The advantage of the magical world is that there is no need to worry about business partners breaking their contracts, because the price paid for breaking a contract is often more terrible than death. Marchioni was a man who was passionate about the pursuit of wealth, and he was always very explicit about it. After signing the contract, Marchioni urged to take the next step immediately. He was not willing to waste a second of making money. This time, Professor Murray asked Stephen to entertain the guests at the party while he accompanied Wade to Marchioni's magic workshop. It's best to put the first batch of goods on the shelves before the start of school. Students and their parents will definitely be willing to empty their wallets to buy our goods. Marchioni said enthusiastically, we can also launch different packaging in different quantities, different qualities. Even if it is just to add some printing on parchment and sprinkle some gold powder, the pure blood nobles are willing to pay three times the price. By the way, I have to rush to make a batch of posters and put them up tomorrow morning. Go to Diagon Alley. Wade couldn't help but be speechless and asked, is it too late? Of course. Marchioni blinked. Dear Vader, the world of magic is omnipotent. Vader thought he had some magical spell that could speed up production, but when he used flow powder to get to Marchioni's company, he discovered that it was the power of money. The company hall is very spacious, with a small flowing waterfall in the center, and the large characters, Aslan's magic workshop, shine in gold above the water waves. The arched dome is painted with pictures of various magical creatures, some of which are still moving slowly. There were burning fireplaces all around with green flames rising and falling, and wizards coming out of them from time to time. Why are you suddenly notified that you have to work overtime during the Christmas holiday? A young man probably didn't notice that his boss was also nearby and complained loudly, I was planning to travel to Italy. I heard that there are products that need to be produced urgently. Another which said with joy, overtime pay will be three times the usual rate. The short-haired young man immediately calmed down. That's it, that's not bad. Give way, please give way. A goblin shouted loudly, directing the box as high as a hill to move with difficulty. He moved slowly because there were many people in the hall, which made the goblin look very irritable. The sudden increase in work tasks made everything look messy, and there were also several house elves running between people's legs, running around quickly and delivering various things. Colorful paper airplanes were hovering in groups over the hall. From time to time, when they spotted a person, they would plunge down from above with a whooshing sound. Oh. A wizard suddenly wore a paper airplane on his hat. He took off the airplane and unfolded it to take a look, and immediately shouted, Why did I just find out now that there is not much oil in the stone scale fish? I said it long before the holiday. Check the inventory and replenish it promptly. Don't let me know who is neglecting their duties. He hurried through the crowd almost knocking over the goblin, who was so angry that he dropped the box and cursed loudly. Wade was very surprised. Judging from the current messy state of the magic workshop, Marchioni may have just ordered all employees to prepare to work overtime after seeing the effect of the Book of Friends. At that time, everyone still held out hope of negotiating with Professor Murray, but the situation was Marchioni, who must win, may have already thought about how to carry out the follow-up work. Sorry, it's really messy here today. It's not usually like this. Vader, Professor, follow me, this way. Marchioni led Wade and Professor Murray through the crowd and entered the special elevator. He breathed a sigh of relief, pressed the button for, sixth floor, technical department, and loosened his collar at the same time. Your workshop now has seven floors. Professor Murray squinted at the row of elevator buttons and said, I remember it was only five floors when I came here last time. Yes, we have developed well in the past few years. Marchioni said proudly, 
The transformation of the magic radio is a big step, and this is also thanks to the professor's willingness to give us authorization. There are not many wizards who are willing to take the initiative to accept new things, let alone modify muggle objects. Many people still think that muggles are stupid, low-level creatures. They are really stupid. When I first went to school, I saw the Scarlet Train running like a giant beast in the Scottish Highlands. I was deeply shocked by the wisdom and power of muggles. After graduating from school, I originally wanted to I went to a muggle university to study, but due to various reasons, I regretfully gave up. For various reasons, isn't it just because I don't understand? Professor Murray revealed the facts bitterly. Ha ha ha, don't speak so bluntly in front of children, Professor. Wade suddenly discovered that although Professor Murray often complained about Marchioni, the relationship between them was much better than it seemed on the surface. When talking in private, there was a special tacit understanding. He looked at the posters on the elevator and listened silently without interrupting. There are two goblins and five or six wizards in the technical department. They have prepared various tools and are waiting in the office. This place is different from a muggle office. There are all kinds of wonderful, slowly moving magical objects, lights of different colors flash from time to time, and the room is filled with many tiny sounds. When they arrived here, Professor Murray and Marchioni found an empty table and sat down to drink tea while Wade communicated with the people in the technology department. Bed first demonstrated the production process of the Book of Friends. He brought ready-made potions that took a long time to prepare. All the people present were experts. They almost mastered the general process after watching it once. Then they disassembled the whole process step by step, and finally reached a point where more than 80% of the small steps could be completed even by third-year students at Hogwarts. Some people were constantly calculating how to further reduce the cost and find various materials for preparation. In less than half an hour, the technical department had determined the production process of the first batch of products, and the entire magic workshop really entered the stage of high-speed operation. During this time, although Marchioni only occasionally chatted with Professor Murray in a low voice, he was also observing bed without leaving any trace. The black-haired boy was not very tall. He rarely spoke after showing his work, but every time he spoke, he would speak meaningfully and to the point. The members of the technical department tried to change his magic rune circuit several times, but before they did it, he pointed out the consequences of doing so, either reducing stability or causing delays or even loss of transmitted information. As it turned out, he was right every time. Marchioni secretly stuck out his tongue, finally understanding why Professor Murray had always looked down on his level. He had clearly scored an E good in the ultimate wizard registration exam. Look at this kid, he not only has genius creativity, a diligent attitude towards study, but also a very pragmatic and hardworking experimental spirit, if he had not tried dozens or hundreds of times, how could he know all the changes? No wonder Professor Murray, with his current status, is willing to give up his face to stand up for this kid and personally fight for greater benefits for him. There are many geniuses in the world, like flowing water, and Marchioni himself is also called a genius by some people, so he understands even more, if many geniuses only have smart minds, they will be lost in the crowd as they grow up, and even go straight to Azkaban for further study because they are too, smart. Only a genius like Wade, as long as he does not die halfway, his achievements are unquestionable, and his glory is obvious. How to win over such a genius? Marchioni changed his strategy, which he had adjusted three times. 11 years old. Is this child really only 11 years old? It makes him feel as if he has lived on the body of a flobberworm for more than 30 years. Could it be? Suddenly, Marchioni leaned forward and said in a low voice, Professor, Professor Murray, tell me the truth, this child is actually your illegitimate child, right? Wade, who was discussing the lead powder ratio with the technical department, suddenly heard a scream. He turned around and saw that Marchioni had rolled down from the table to the ground, and Professor Murray smiled and indicated that everything was fine. But for some reason, his smile was a little hideous. Wade blinked blankly. Aslan's magic workshop was indeed very efficient. When Wade went out, he already had the first edition of, The Book of Friends, in his hand. This is a preliminarily determined collection that is related to at least two people and at most fifteen people. The cover is much more beautiful than Wade's handwriting. 
The font is bordered with gold and reflects the slightly swaying lysianthus. The internal pages use different colors and flowers to show the difference. For example, sunflowers for two people, tulips for three people, daylilies for four people, violets for five people, etc., are all flowers that can symbolize friendship. In Wade's opinion, this, Book of Friends, is already very exquisite, but Marchioni is not too satisfied. This is the version for women, they should dust it with a little powder. Are there other versions? Vader asked. Of course. Marchioni said, there are versions for men, which will be printed with pictures of green pine trees, crowns, scepters, bows and arrows. There are also animal versions, which will be printed with unicorns, phoenixes, fire dragons, and pegasus. One category, the children's version includes velvet velvet and fairies, the novelty version includes dementors and three-headed dogs, the Quidditch version will feature famous Quidditch stars and broomsticks, and there are also Buildings Edition, Vila Edition, Order of Merlin Edition, Academy Edition. He mentioned dozens of types in one go, as if he could come up with a lot of money-making ideas without even thinking. Finally, he said, there are all kinds of patterns to choose from. Many people will buy a few more books for collection even if they don't need them. Go back. But we currently have the most flower templates, so I'll make this one first. If you don't like it, you can give it to your female classmates. When other versions are printed, I'll give you a few sets. Wade shook his head. What do I need so much for? You can keep it yourself. Marchioni said with a smile. It's also good to give it to classmates to get closer. I don't like to please other people. In other words, his life has not reached the point where he needs to please others to continue. This has been the case in his past and present lives. It's not a favor, but if someone does you a little favor, you can repay it with a friend's account. It doesn't need to be too much, just a set for two or three people. Marchioni gave instructions like an elder brother. He, this thing costs almost nothing to you, but it is a relatively precious gift to others. You will be very happy if you receive it. Also, Vader. He touched Wade's soft hair and said, we are not a lone star in the night sky. There are always times when we need help from others, how can you get it if you don't give it first? Although what Marchioni said makes sense, if it makes you feel embarrassed, then there is no need to imitate him. Professor Murray suddenly said, blindly imitating others will only make you lose your own judgment. All you need to do is just be good to yourself. A lone star is naturally lonely, but if it is the sun, there will naturally be stars around it. Quote. Well, maybe you are right, Professor. Marchioni shrugged, but I always think that there is nothing wrong with having a good relationship with most people. You have been thinking about how to make money all day since the first grade, but Wade is not a businessman, he is an alchemist, enjoying loneliness, pursuing the unknown, and being in the company of knowledge. This is the character of an alchemist. Don't use your unscrupulous business practices have come to contaminate my students, Professor Murray said unhappily. Hey, you are slandering, Professor. Marchioni protested, and immediately gave an example, if I really do whatever it takes to make money, then I should ask the technical department to adjust the use period of the friend's account to one years later, users would have to buy new ones every year, so that the gold galleons would really continue to flow. But I didn't do that, which proves that even though I'm doing business, I still have noble moral character. But you must have thought about it, right? Otherwise you wouldn't blurt out such a vicious method. It's not illegal if you think about it. Their next stop was naturally Gringotts. It was already evening, and there were very few wizards shopping in Diagon Alley. Instead, some sneaky guys in black robes began to appear. Almost all of them walked into a dark and gloomy alley. Don't look over there. That's Nocturne Alley, the favorite haunt of dark wizards. Marchioni blocked Vader's view, and at the same time wrapped his arms in wide sleeves, Vader's whole body was almost covered by him, while Professor Murray walked on the other side of him. Several people arrived at Gringotts smoothly, and an elf standing near the door bowed to them. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Marchioni extended his hand and said, Mr. Wade Gray needs to rent a new vault. Wade Gray. The goblin looked up at Vader, who was almost half a head taller than him. He did not question his age, but nodded and said, Okay, I understand, which one should I rent? Plant a treasury. Please introduce the types and prices to Mr. Gray first. Please come over here. 
Wade followed the goblin and Marchioni to go through the treasury procedures, while Professor Murray came to another goblin who was sitting on a high stool writing. Long time no see, Griphook. Hello, Professor Murray, is there anything I can do for you? The goblin named Griphook said respectfully. I want to get something from my vault. Professor Murray showed the key. Okay, wait a minute, I'll get the jingle. The goblins imprisoned a fire dragon in the underground vault to deal with those with bad intentions. The jingle piece allows the goblins and customers to travel safely through the vault. The first time Wade got on the legendary trolley, Michael once described it to him, as if it was going to knock your brains out. The stroller looks narrow, small, and very simple, but it is not crowded even if it seats two adults, a child, and two goblins. The pull ring flicked the armrest connected to the front of the car, and the cart clicked away. Close your eyes and don't open your mouth. Marchioni seized the moment and shouted to Wade. Wade didn't ask stupid questions and immediately complied. The trolley slid down the steep slope, getting faster and faster, and gradually you could hear the icy wind whistling past you. The road in the middle must be particularly winding, because their bodies are involuntarily swaying left and right, as if they are trying to throw people away. Fortunately, he kept his eyes closed, and the dizziness was greatly reduced. Marchioni's arm was firmly stuck in front of his chest, as if adding a safety lever to him. After an unknown amount of time, the cart finally stopped. At this time, several people's faces were already pale, and they held onto the railing for a while before Wade and Marchioni could climb out of the car. As for Professor Murray, he still needs to go further down to get something from his vault. Okay, let's set off. Griphook said, turning the lever on the trolley again. Another goblin named Color was standing on the roadside, with a 317 sign hanging on the vault door next to him. He held the bronze key with his slender fingers, inserted it into the keyhole and turned it a few times. The chain suddenly came alive and crawled around, and the vault door opened. Wade stood at the door and looked inside. The empty vault was like a huge cave, with not even a weed in it. This will be your vault from now on, Mr. Wade Gray. Cooler handed him the key and said, please be sure to keep your key. Wade took the key, which had a slender silver chain on it, just enough for him to hang around his neck. A bit empty, isn't it? Marchioni said with a smile, and then signed a document and handed it to Color. Transfer 50,000 galleons from my vault to vault number. 317. Cooler took it expressionlessly and said, okay, please wait a moment. It seemed that within just a few breaths, a tinkling sound suddenly sounded in my ears. Vader was looking for the source of the sound when he suddenly saw tens of thousands of galleons falling from the sky, like a heavy rain in the vault. They hit the ground with a clanging sound, forming a golden hill, shining with dazzling golden light under the torch. Marchioni smiled and said, One day, this place will be filled with gold galleons, right? Mr. Cooler, can you just take galleons out of your vault? While waiting for Professor Murray in the hall, Wade asked Marchioni softly. Don't worry. Marchioni knew what he was thinking and whispered in a low voice. Goblins, they can put galleons into the vault, but they cannot take it out casually, unless authorized by the owner of the vault. The Ministry of Magic is here we made a contract with the goblins a long time ago, a very ancient and powerful contract. It is precisely because goblins will never steal from others that people are accustomed to storing precious things in Gringotts. But I heard that Gringotts was broken into this summer. Vader thought of a certain news report that he had heard someone mention. Yes, that's what happened. The goblin Griphook, who came over with Professor Murray, heard what Vader said and immediately emphasized with emphasis, but he didn't steal anything. Gringotts is still the safest place in the wizarding world. Professor Murray, who went to get something, still had his hands empty, and Marchioni didn't ask any questions. After walking out of the gate of Gringotts, he said to the two of them, Sorry, Professor, Vader, I have to arrange new products as soon as possible. It's only been a few days since school started, and there's still a lot of business to coordinate. Professor Murray nodded. Go and do your work, Marchioni. See you next time, Mr. Marchioni. Wade also said goodbye. Marchioni bowed with his hat in one hand and walked away in a hurry. Wade saw that the direction he was heading seemed to be the offices of the Daily Prophet, although he had sighed in his heart several times, at this moment he could not bear to he couldn't help but say it again, 
Mr. Marchioni is really a man who counts every second. As long as it has something to do with money, he is always more active than anyone else. Professor Murray said as he led Wade down the steps, but he is a very good businessman, I am not saying that he is better than others. He is more honest, but he has a longer term vision than others and can spend several years or even more than 10 years building a foundation in order to obtain greater benefits. He looked at Wade with admiration and said, if you are already 30 or 40 years old, and you accidentally create the book of friends with a flash of inspiration, then I have to advise you to be careful. Maybe Marchioni will try his best to use it from you have more profit in your hands but you are only 11 years old. He paused and smiled inexplicably. Wade guessed, if you were younger, wouldn't it be easier to be deceived? No, Vader, Professor Murray said with emotion, you are young, this is your current weakness, but it is also your strength, Marchioni, like me, believes in your potential and looks forward to your success. The future will shine brightly. Therefore, he will help you as much as possible now, dedicate time, resources and energy, and even be willing to give up some additional benefits to support your growth hoping that you can bring him greater rewards in the future. Wade frowned slightly. Professor Murray did not lower his head to look at him, but seemed to know what he was thinking. He smiled and said, unhappy. Do you think he is too realistic? Not unhappy. Wade did not admit it, but said, I understand that most relationships between people come from being needed and used, but Mr. Marchioni is very enthusiastic. It's hard to accept that his inner considerations are so. He hesitated, not knowing how to describe the contrast euphemistically. Professor Murray smiled and said, Cold. Do you take practical interests too seriously? Wade nodded silently. Professor Murray said, Bede, the most terrifying thing in this world is not being used, because, being used, is also the recognition of your talents and value. People who have no use value at all are sad, just like a speck of dust, no one cares whether it disappears or exists, so don't be afraid or hate the idea of others trying to take advantage of you. You must learn to use your talents, overcome obstacles, and use this resource in this relationship of interests and needs. Promote your own growth, but you must keep a clear mind and protect your own interests. Don't become a tool for others, but be your own master. He lowered his head and saw the boy's gray eyes looking at him seriously. Although he didn't speak, Murray knew that the boy would definitely take his words to heart and think and learn attentively. A complex current surged in his heart. On the one hand, Terence Murray has the satisfaction and joy of sharing wisdom and experience, and watching students grow from ignorance to knowledge, from immaturity to maturity. On the other hand, he felt that he seemed to be transmitting the cruelty, ruthlessness and complexity of adult society to innocent children. He was worried that the children would take the wrong path due to negative influences, and he suddenly felt remorse and guilt in his heart. So Professor Murray changed the topic and said in a relaxed tone, but, these are too far away for you, so don't think about it for the time being. Just remember, don't promise anything easily, if you don't know what to do, whatever you want to do, just come to me. Professor Murray made a promise that he would never utter. Thank you, Professor. Wade raised his head and asked. You have given me a lot of help since we met, and I am really grateful, how can I repay you? Then, please continue to maintain your enthusiasm for learning and your unremitting desire to explore the unknown, Mr. Gray. Professor Murray said with a smile, for a professor, what else is better than seeing yourself what about better rewards for your hard work? Professor Murray used the flow network to send Wade back home again. However, because the acquaintances of the Flow Network administration had already gone home from work, they could not temporarily connect the Gray family's fireplace to the network. They could only fly to the nearby area first and then walk slowly over. Professor. Huh. I heard that apparition can instantly transfer to another place. Wade asked, patting the soot on his hair, why do we use the Flow Network? Because apparition is not a suitable way to travel with children. Professor Murray said gently. This is a profound and dangerous magic. If you are not careful, it will cause catastrophic consequences. Children are especially vulnerable. So when we don't need to escape, we should choose a safer means of transportation. It was late when they got home. The greys were worried, one looking at the door and the other guarding in front of the fireplace. Fiona, who was standing in front of the window, saw the two people, one big and one small, 
walking slowly, and she screamed in surprise, holding up her skirt and rushed out of the door. Professor Murray stopped, looked at Wade and smiled. Child, you have experienced a lot today, you must be very tired. Although as a teacher I should not say this, but, go home and have a good rest, don't read tonight, okay? Yes, Professor. Wade said respectfully and gratefully. Seeing that the two still had something to say, the Greys stopped at the door and waited for them to finish their words. Then finally, because your first work made me very satisfied, I want to give you a small reward. Professor Murray took out a very small box from his pocket and handed it to Wade. Wade immediately guessed that this was what he had specially taken from Gringotts, how valuable must something be for Professor Murray to put in the vault. He didn't know, but subconsciously refused. No, Professor, I don't refuse, Wade. Professor Murray stuffed the box into his hand without saying anything, and said, this is not just a reward, but also a test, use it well, Wade. So, your parchment, Ferdinand said palely. Friend's account, dear, it's friend's account. Fiona corrected him dissatisfiedly, how could her son's outstanding and great invention be simply referred to as, parchment? Okay, book of friends, Ferdinand corrected, staring at Wade with his eyes wide open. After selling the patent, they gave you 50,000 galleons, and there will be a steady stream of, patent royalties in the future. There was something wrong with his demeanor, which made Wade, who was originally happy, a little uneasy. His expression subconsciously became serious, and he said seriously, yes, father. There are even people, who want to buy it out with 200,000 galleons, but your professor didn't agree. Yes. Ferdinand looked like he was having difficulty breathing and said, you followed your professor. Professor Murray. Yes, it was Professor Murray, and a businessman, who went to Diagon Alley. It was Mr. Marco Marchoni. Wade pondered for a moment and said, they all took good care of me. And then in front of you, and a goblin, he transferred all 50,000 gold galleons. Yes, father. Ferdinand's expression was too strange, not like he was simply proud or happy for him, Wade was a little nervous. It was only then that he thought that he should have asked his parents for their opinions, but under Marchioni's urging, everything today seemed to be accelerated, and he subconsciously ignored it. Logically speaking, Professor Murray and Marchioni were not such careless people. But considering that his parents did not know magic, perhaps in their eyes, although Wade was only 11 years old, he was the only one in the Gray family who could communicate and make decisions on an equal footing. Realizing this made Wade feel a little uncomfortable. He suppressed these emotions and tried to speak in a relaxed tone. Because school is about to start, Mr. Marchioni is very anxious and afraid of missing this opportunity to make money, so everything seems very hasty, sorry, Dad, I forgot that I should come back to discuss it with you first. Okay. Wade is only 11 years old, do you still ask him to do everything well? Fiona pretended to be unhappy and pushed Ferdinand away, then hugged her son and kissed his forehead very hard. Great, baby. Mom is so proud of you. How many 11-year-olds? The child can achieve financial freedom by himself. And it is your exclusive patent. It's so shocking. I can't believe I can give birth to such an excellent son. Quote. She kissed him, then pulled Wade up from the sofa and urged him, what are you waiting for? Come and have dinner, I made a big meal. Ferdy, you go wash your hands too. Okay. Wade, who was pushed to the dining table, turned his head and saw Ferdinand standing up with the back of the sofa. He even staggered and almost fell when he walked to the bathroom. Fiona didn't see it. She hummed a song and happily opened the lid. The aroma of the food immediately awakened the taste buds of several people. But Ferdinand couldn't eat the whole time. He almost poked the tomato into his nostrils. After the steak on the fork fell off, he chewed it for a few times before he found it. Your father is so shocked. Fiona was worried that Wade would feel frustrated or disappointed, and whispered to him, when he was 11 years old, he couldn't even figure out addition and subtraction within 100. This is too exaggerated. Wade couldn't help but smile, for the non-existent, clumsy father in his mother's mouth, and for the love shining in his mother's eyes. Dad, after dinner, Wade asked tentatively, Professor Mori helped me a lot today. Although he said he didn't need it, I still want to thank him, but I don't know how to do it. According to some, hidden rules of the workplace, he learned in his previous life, 
it is appropriate to take out 20,000 or 30,000 galleons to a noble man, like Professor Mori at this time, otherwise it would be ignorant. But Wade hesitated for a long time, and still felt that if he said so, Professor Mori might turn his face on the spot. The past experience cannot be applied to the present, at least not to Professor Mori, otherwise it is hard to say whether it is, thank you, or, insult. As an 11-year-old child, Wade knew that he didn't need to be too sophisticated or too smooth. But Wade didn't think it was possible for him to accept Professor Murray's kindness as if nothing had happened. Oh, Ferdinand was a little stunned, and after a long while he said, Write a thank you letter, Wade. Write a letter. Wade didn't expect that his suggestion to Stephen during the day was to write a letter, and this suggestion was sent back by his father at night. Yes, write a letter, be sincere and attentive, Ferdinand thought for a while and said, on Professor Murray's birthday or holidays, remember to send a small gift, the most important thing is to repay with better grades. I understand. Wade nodded. Well, go write a letter, Wade. And, Ferdinand smiled with some difficulty, I am very proud of you, son. Watching his son return to his bedroom, Ferdinand sat down with his palms inserted into his hair, looking particularly depressed. What happened to you today? Fiona hugged him from behind, resting her head on his neck, her long hair sliding down her shoulders. She muttered in dissatisfaction, the little invention Wade made sold a lot of money, the professor at the school was so nice to him, and the businessmen he met were honest and enthusiastic. Everything was fine, why do you look like this? Wade didn't even smile when he returned to the room. Ferdinand, no matter what the reason, don't be a parent who will spoil the fun, okay. She muttered to herself, feeling her husband's tense muscles gradually relax. Yes, you are right. Ferdinand held his wife's hand and tried to smile. Their professor is a good person. Everything is fine. I was too shocked, sorry. I'm fine, remember to apologize to Wade tomorrow morning. He happily shared his achievements with you, but you didn't even give him a good face. Got it. Late at night, when his wife was completely asleep, Ferdinand put on his clothes and went to the balcony. He wanted to light a cigarette, but his hands were shaking so badly that he failed several times. After finally lighting the cigarette, he took a deep breath. The smoke blurred his eyes in the lonely London at night. It was not until this moment that the overwhelming fear completely overwhelmed Ferdinand. His Wade, his smart, sensible, well-behaved and kind son, his brain was worth at least a million pounds, and he had a huge fortune that could be cashed in at any time, he followed some strangers to a completely unfamiliar place, if Wade was in danger, if he was hurt, what could he do as a father? The wizard came and went without a trace, and Ferdinand didn't even know where to find him. He smoked one cigarette after another, and his body was trembling from fingers to toes. This night was so cold that it made people shiver. Upstairs, Wade watched the smoke drift away in wisps, and also saw the faint firelight flickering again and again. He leaned on the railing, raised his head slightly, and saw the waning moon like a silver hook hanging on the top of a tall building. The last week of the holiday went by so fast. Wade felt that he had only read a few books, but time had already slipped away. Professor Murray left him a small matchbox, which contained a small piece of curled, blue-black thin film, like a dried caterpillar or a wing membrane torn from a bat's wing. Because he could not use a magic wand, Wade only observed its appearance with a magnifying glass, and did not use more destructive monitoring methods. He could only study it carefully after he arrived at school. As he said, Marchioni really made, the book of friends, go on sale as scheduled. Wade also received an invitation letter for the release date of Aslan's magic workshop, and the owl sent him samples, there were two sets of each style, and it was noted that he could keep one set and give the other set to others. Compared with joining in the excitement of the first day of release, Wade preferred to read books at home. However, Fiona saw the advertisement of the Book of Friends in the Daily Prophet and wanted to go there with great interest, so the father and son accompanied her. The family drove to Charing Cross Road in Westminster, parked the car nearby, and then walked to the leaky cauldron. It had just snowed recently, and the ground was wet and slippery. Fiona held Ferdinand's arm tightly, and her feet were still slipping when she walked. I really want to fly to the leaky cauldron, drink some butter beer, no, fire whiskey, Fiona muttered as she walked tremblingly. It's almost there. Ferdinand comforted her. 
In fact, they had already seen the sign of the leaky cauldron. As squibs, the gray couple did not accept them as students in the magic school, but the wizarding world did not completely close the door to them. Ferdinand and Fiona both have magic in their bodies. Although they cannot use it, it also makes them different from muggles. For example, they can see the leaky cauldron, which does not exist in the eyes of muggles, and potions can also have normal effects on them. If they were pure muggles, some potions that were common to wizards would turn into deadly poisons when they drank them, such as the bone spirit, some injuries that were not worth mentioning to wizards would be irreparable and serious injuries to muggles. When Wade was in Hogwarts, the Greys would sometimes wander around Diagon Alley. Although they did not have wands, they could enter Diagon Alley as long as they followed other wizards when they opened the entrance, and others would generally not say anything. At this time, Wade felt that his parents were like returning home after entering Diagon Alley. Naturally, they first drank a beer at the Leaky Cauldron, I don't know when Fiona no longer disliked the hygiene here, and then followed the winding path to the entrance, all looking at Wade. Wade took out his wand and knocked on a brick on the wall. The familiar archway immediately appeared, and there was a huge poster in front of him. The Book of Friends, a landmark symbol. Closing square bracket. You haven't bought a Book of Friends for your child yet. Merlin, what should he do at school? Close black lens bracket. Open black lens bracket top quality, excellent but not expensive, irreplaceable enjoyment in the new era. Close black lens bracket. Open black lens bracket with me by your side, the world is different, communicate anytime, anywhere, the friend book changes your world and mine. Close black lens bracket. Oh my god, Fiona couldn't help but exclaimed. Colorful posters can be seen in almost every corner of the site, and various slogans are rolling and appearing, urging people to buy immediately. Diagon Alley is crowded with people, parents of children everywhere, and even many foreign wizards. They don't need to go to Marchioni's shop anymore, because along the streets of Diagon Alley, there is a sales point every 10 meters. The clerk shouted loudly, limit one book per person. Limit one book. Hey, sir, you took too much. Don't worry. We will produce more products soon. Don't worry, if you are willing to wait for two days, you can sit in the store and choose slowly. Various styles. But no one listened to him. People kept pushing forward, holding galleons in their hands and shouting loudly. Give me three books. I have three children. Don't squeeze in the back. Who stepped on my shoes? I want the red one. Give me the red one. A cry suddenly came from the crowd, and the crowded crowd dispersed with a bang. The two wizards rolled on the ground and fought. Screams and shouts were mixed together, and soon they were pulled apart by the people next to them. Fiona swallowed her saliva. We why don't we just look here? A wise choice. Ferdinand bought ice cream, and the three of them sat at a small table outside the store, watching the daunting rush to buy over there. The boss Fusco, wearing a vest, brought ice cream to the table and said with a smile, Are you here to buy the book of friends for your children too? Um, yes, Ferdinand said vaguely. Then you better go buy it early. Fusco adjusted his bow tie and said, I have inside information. The book of friends made by Oslan Magic Workshop Overtime is only this batch. After the purchase, their staff will have to take a few days off before they can continue to work. So if you miss this one, you will have to wait at least a week to buy it. Wade looked up at him, no wonder the shouting of the clerks to maintain order was useless. With these Diagon Alley bosses promoting, inside information, to create anxiety, of course everyone will worry that they can't buy it. What is your inside information? Ferdinand asked cautiously. Oh, the daughter of a neighbor of my distant aunt works in Aslan's magic workshop and is responsible for the production of the Book of Friends, so my information is absolutely true and reliable. Fusco said proudly. Oh, Ferdinand nodded doubtfully. Wade. Could this, inside information, be released by Marchioni's employees? In order to stimulate consumption, rumors were deliberately spread. On the one hand, the official propaganda was, we have a lot of inventory, and on the other hand, people revealed the inside information, inventory is tight. Of course, people would choose to believe the latter. Wait a week, it's nothing, right? Wasn't it good to have only owls before? Fiona asked curiously. How is this the same? Boss Fusco looked at Wade and said, think about your son. Madam, 
When he gets to school, his classmates are talking about and exchanging friend books, but he has nothing. Won't he be isolated? At least he will feel inferior, right? Think about that scene, as a parent, wouldn't you feel uncomfortable? Fiona followed his words and imagined it. The students in the school were playing in groups, chatting in the friend book, laughing and joking with each other, and her Wade could only stand alone in the corner, watching pitifully. Fiona's heart suddenly became sad, and she nodded repeatedly and said, yes. Of course. It's too pitiful. It can't be like this. Right. Everyone thinks so. At least let the child bring a friend book to school, so that he won't be out of tune with other children, so is there anyone who can resist not buying it? Can't resist, then I will definitely buy it. Fiona said very flatteringly. Fusco sighed and left, still sighing about the love of parents for their children. Fiona was looking at the people rushing to buy things, and suddenly she stood up. Ferdinand grabbed her arm again. Wade looked at her in surprise. Ferdinand. Wade already has a friend's book, remember? Ferdinand said helplessly, he has a lot of friend's books, and he can exchange with everyone he meets. He is not a poor guy. He is even the inventor of the friend's book. What kind of things does he want? Fiona blinked and suddenly realized, oh, yes. Wade. So, you are really encouraged, not secretly promoting for me, right? The next morning, when Wade was woken up by his father, he found that it was an hour earlier than the alarm clock had been set. It snowed last night, Wade. Ferdinand was still cold, and he urged, get up quickly, we have to leave early today. Wade sat up from the quilt, pulled his messy hair, and opened the curtains. He saw that the snow on the windowsill was about two inches thick, and the yard was also white. There was a circle of footprints around the car, which was left by Ferdinand when he was clearing the snow in the morning. Wade dressed quickly and went downstairs for breakfast. He heard his parents arguing in the kitchen. Listen, dear, it's too cold today. There's no need for all of us to go to the station. It's enough for me to send Wade off alone. But I also want to send Wade off. I won't see him for half a year after he goes back to school. Quote. The two talked for a long time, and finally Ferdinand insisted that Fiona stay at home. He usually obeyed Fiona, but if he made a decision, no one could beat him. After the two came out of the kitchen, Wade pretended not to hear their argument. After breakfast, he asked, Mom, can you help me take care of Miss Ava first? Let her fly to Hogwarts when the weather is good. Okay. Fiona agreed happily and immediately made plans. I can make her owl food myself. General Bard's rations are almost finished. And Milline, I think she may need to lose weight. The running wheel I bought before was also bitten. Millian is Fiona's pet hamster. She is a shy little guy and doesn't need her to worry about it. Seeing that she no longer entangled in the issue of seeing her often instead focused on a few pets, Ferdinand was relieved. They quickly finished breakfast, and Ferdinand picked up Wade's big suitcase and stuffed it into the trunk. Goodbye, Mom. Before getting in the car, Wade turned around and said goodbye and Fiona stood in front of the door and waved vigorously. The car slowly left. As Ferdinand expected, the road was slippery on snowy days, and the car drove very slowly. Even so, someone had a collision. Two cars stopped on the side of the road, and some broken parts were scattered on the snow. The car was very quiet. Wade looked out the window, and suddenly his eyes blurred. A gray car seemed to appear next to them as if squeezed out of the air. Ah. What happened? Ferdinand looked at the rearview mirror and caught his son's surprised look. Nothing. I seem to see a car rear-end collision. Well, it happens all the time. Ferdinand didn't get distracted and focused on the front, so as not to encounter an accident and not have time to break. Wade watched the gray car next to him run parallel to them for a few minutes, and then suddenly disappeared from sight. When he found it again, it just chased the car in front and drove through the intersection. The next second, the green light turned red. No one on the street noticed anything, including Ferdinand, who didn't notice the car that seemed to be jumping forward. If an ordinary person could see it, it would probably be regarded as a ghost story, right? Wade couldn't help thinking. The slowly moving car finally arrived at King's Cross Station, and it was still more than 10 minutes before the car started. Ferdinand took the suitcase off the car, put it on the trolley, and pushed it all the way to platform nine and three quarters. When he got here, Ferdinand walked slower and slower, and finally had to stop. 
Bidkin held his hand. Let's go in together, Dad. He said. Ferdinand smiled bitterly. No, Bidkin, I'm not a wizard, I can't. Yes. Bidkin interrupted him and said. Platform 9 and 3 quarters has no magical restrictions, even muggles can enter. It's just that the Ministry of Magic has cast a spell here, and muggles usually ignore it. So, I, Ferdinand took a deep breath, staring at the brick wall in front of him with eyes as if looking at some monster. I can also, enter this platform. Yes, come with me. Bidkin held his hand and led him forward. Ferdinand looked nervous, and when he was about to hit the brick wall, he couldn't help but close his eyes, nothing happened. But the ears suddenly became noisy. A crimson train stopped at the platform, all the carriage doors were open, and children in Hogwarts uniforms leaned on the train windows to say goodbye to their parents. The platform was also crowded with people, some children were running around in a hurry, and some were hugging their parents reluctantly. There were cats walking freely on the ground, and the owls in the cage turned their heads and looked around. The older students gathered together and started discussing their homework for the holidays. Some students struggled to get out of their mother's arms, saying, Don't kiss me like that, Mom, I'm not a child anymore. Have you put away all your friend books? An old woman who looked very stern said to the child next to her, Don't lose them, remember to contact them every day. The silly-looking child next to her said honestly, I know, Grandma. Can I have another friend book, Dad? A girl begged while clinging to her father's arm, I have a lot of friends at school. My sister hasn't started school yet, you can buy her one in a few days. Don't even think about it, a girl who was obviously younger next to her jumped and shouted, don't even think about it, that's mine. Looking around, at least one out of every three passengers was talking about the friend's book, and some couldn't wait to take out paper and start writing, indulging in, online chatting, some took out the friend's book every few minutes to see if there was any new message. In order to reply in time, they even clipped a portable pen in their chest pockets or ears. Ferdinand watched this scene almost obsessively, nine and three quarters station was different from Diagon Alley. It was once the starting point of his dream magic, but it eventually shut him out. When he was a child, he had imagined countless times that he would embark on a journey here, but in the end, he stepped into it for the first time at the age of 32. After a while, Ferdinand retracted his gaze and said in a suppressed, slightly trembling voice, Let's go, Wade, let's find a carriage for you. They walked along the platform for a while and found an empty carriage. Wade put away his suitcase, got off the train and said goodbye to his father. Bed. Ferdinand put his hand on Bed's shoulder, wanting to say something, but he couldn't. Tell him to study hard. Bed has studied harder than anyone else. Tell him to build good relationships with others. Ferdinand has said this many times. Tell him, his parents will always be his backers, and he can ask his family for help no matter what problems he encounters. But Ferdinand knew clearly that he and his wife were completely powerless in the face of wizards. Even if Bed really asked them for help, what could they do for him except empathize with his pain? After a while, Ferdinand tightened his palm slightly. We are always proud of you. Wade, no matter what challenges you encounter, don't be afraid, don't hesitate, and ask the teacher for help in time when you encounter trouble, understand. Wade nodded, looked into his father's eyes, and asked softly, Dad, you didn't want me to go to Hogwarts at the beginning, right? Why didn't you stop it? Quote dot dot dot. I can't, Wade. Ferdinand smiled bitterly. I want to, but I can't, because I have heard that if underage wizards cannot learn to control their magic, they will generate a dark force called Obscurus, destroy themselves, destroy everything. So he could only watch his son step into the slaughterhouse that was like a death harvester in his eyes with worry. Can't stop it. Can't stop it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support our channel.